Take a deep inhale. And exhale. Let go of anything that doesn't serve you. For today's six month psychic reading, let's promise to each other that we will do our best to make our upcoming six month experience life changing, metamorphic, and deeply healing. Let's vow to let go of any circumstances, habits, or relationships that do not serve us and invite abundance, prosperity, new soulmates, and healthy habits into our lives. Why are we starting off this pick a card tarot reading in this way? Because each and every one of us deserves to reach our goals and live our best lives throughout the next six month cycle. Now let's get into these super in-depth readings. Hello all my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Samina and I am the creator of the Gentle Heart Tarot, the Pastel Journey Tarot, as well as the Wild Muse Oracle deck. And of course, your favorite psychic here on YouTube. As we've already established, today's psychic reading is all about what's happening within the next six months of your life. I have prepared three groups that you can choose from and I'd like you to pick one of these three groups intuitively. And just so you can prepare yourself accordingly, my beautiful babies of the zodiac, I want to let you know that all three of these groups are going to be super detailed and in-depth. I'm taking my sweet time with each one of these readings. So relax, lean back, and enjoy this healing and comforting space on YouTube. But now allow me to introduce you to the three groups. Group number one corresponds to the Starseed Oracle as well as the Aqua Aura Point. Group number two corresponds to the Mystic Mondays Tarot as well as the Carnelian. And group number three corresponds to the Divine Animals Oracle as well as the Cognac Calcite. The timestamps to all three of these groups can be found below in the description box. So all you need to do is click your timestamp and you'll be fast forwarded to the relevant part of this video. So I will now give you a little moment of privacy to meditate on the three groups and then I'll be right back with you in order to guide you into your pick a card tarot readings. By now, you've hopefully been able to select one of these three groups in order to figure out exactly what's happening within the next six months of your life. I will be starting off the readings with group number one, which corresponds to the Starseed Oracle and the Aqua Aura Point. Therefore, if this is the group that you chose, then please continue watching. And to my other two beautiful groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading. You chose the Starseed Oracle in connectivity to the Aqua Aura Crystal Point. So this is the beautiful Aqua Aura Crystal Point group number one. I know this is one of your favorites. Excellent choice. I absolutely love this crystal too. But now let's move into your six month prediction, shall we? So we can figure out exactly what's coming towards you within six months. And as mentioned throughout the intro, this pick a card tarot reading is going to be so detailed, so personal and accurate. I'm excited to deliver all these messages from spirit to you so you know exactly what to prep for and what's coming towards you. So first up, we've got lifting the veil. The next six months are going to be life-changing for you, group number one. This is going to be a time of you not only questioning everything and making sure that you have insight about so many different areas of your life life where you've maybe lost track or lost control over in the past, but you're also deciding that anything unaligned must go, including people, group number one. I see here within lifting the veil that any situation that you kind of told yourself was okay or that you could handle or deal with is no longer going to be in your life six months from now because you're not okay with situations where too much pressure or too much focus is being put on you to deal with everything yourself or to solve everybody's problems. I see here within lifting the veil that you're looking beyond people pleasing, beyond trying to just be the person that everyone likes and you're actually seeing what serves you and which people truly have your back as well as your best interests at heart, those are the ones you're keeping. And everyone who gets mad when you do something for yourself is going to have to go because 
you lifted that veil, group number one. You're no more allowing for people to gaslight you or to make you believe or think something that isn't actually true. I see here within the child of the cosmos that you are understanding that knowledge and wisdom is truly power. And in lifting the veil, you are watching some wild documentaries. You're taking in some wild conspiracy theories, but you're also seeing a lot of truth in it. You're also seeing that there are a lot of things that have been hidden from the general public that you now have knowledge about group number one and I see that these next six months are going to be so life-changing because of some of the new knowledge that you're acquiring and the things that you're seeing from a different perspective whether it be the healthcare system whether it be the workforce the nine to five system whether it be incarceration health and also how things are farmed and different types of growth hormones that are put into foods. I can definitely see here within the child of the cosmos and lifting the veil that there's so many things that you're learning about that's just changing your perspective of life and this planet and corporations forever. Next up, we've got the Star Brothers. Now, the Star Brothers shows me that you've got this protective energy around you. So even though you're learning all of these new things, you're protected from harm, even if you're finding that it's hard for you to make the switch from supporting corporations that you're now finding don't actually carry your values. Know here that it can take time to change. It can take time to kind of readjust to a new pattern and to these new truths that you're finding. And there's no point in shaming yourself for that group number one. There's no point in feeling as though you're not doing good enough just because you're not immediately acclimating to becoming this quote unquote perfect human being that does everything right. Give yourself time, give yourself a little bit of a period of grace for these next six months because you're learning so much. Your horizon is just broadening to a degree that you didn't think was possible. And overall, you're never going to be the same in six months time. I see here within the money path for you, group number one, that there is a path with money that's waiting for you to find it. I see that within the next six months, you're definitely going to find it easier to make money, to keep money, and also to invest money. I see that these next six months are going to have a huge impact on your financial literacy, but also how you're setting up your life, financially speaking, with investments and how you're spending your money overall. And I can see here within the bow that you're slowly but surely just continuing to solidify your role in your family and your community as the wise one, the one who knows exactly how to handle things when it comes to finances and the earthly realms in order to ensure longevity and long-term gratification. I see here in the bow that within the next six months, a lot of people are thinking really highly of you, group number one. That also includes lovers. And I do want you to know here within the bow that this is also a sign of respect. This is a sign of accomplishment for the next six months. So we've got the younger man too. I see here within the younger man that there's going to be some sort of dealings or relationship with a younger man within the next six months. So this may be a very stable thing. It could be a fling group number one. We have yet to find out more details about what's going on here with the younger man. But trust me, group number one, you know the unicorn mom is here to provide you with the information. If you chose group number one, by the way, leave a little bow emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you're here and that this is the group that you chose and that you're interested in listening into what this younger man brings to the table and who they are and what type of impact they'll have within the next six months of your life group number one so we've got the ten of cups wow they're going to bring you a lot of fulfillment and happiness so if this is a fling this goes really well for you group number one and not to say that this makes it okay but you you would be the one breaking up with a younger man as there is no heartbreak here for you. You're getting exactly what you want out of this relationship or situationship with the younger man. 
and you're feeling very happy about it overall. The Ten of Cups shows the type of fulfillment that can also happen in a stable relationship, though. So let's not discredit the younger man as just being a fling or a booty call or anything like that, group number one. I want you to know here that the message is that the younger man brings happiness. The younger man brings fulfillment and gives you what you need within these next six months. So this type of fulfillment is the type of like emotional support that was just super necessary during this time. As I see here in the Five of Swords and the Ten of Swords, which you may have noticed popped out of the pile in a very peculiar way, <laughs> group number one, uh, just shows overall that you are going through some mental challenges, some mental struggles. And the next six months, having someone by your side within this time is really going to help take your mind off things and have you worry less and be a lot less anxious. So this younger man serves an important purpose and helps you to just kind of chill and not think of your anxiety and your stressors so much. It could also be a relationship in which you're physical, you're trying new things behind closed doors, and it's bringing you a lot of pleasure. I see here within the Three of Cups that this is a type of person that you're meeting in a very social way. So you may meet them at a cafe or a bar through friends. I see here within the Three of Cups that this is someone that you can go out with. So it's most likely also going to be a connection with longevity. Okay, this could be a soulmate, group number one, because I see that you aren't embarrassed to bring them around your friends or your family you're feeling very comfortable around this younger man. And I can see that they're the type of person who is very mature. They are wise beyond their years. They are definitely given a lot of credit also on a daily basis for that, but they had no choice other than to be mature at a very young age. And you both connect because you've got some similar life stories going on. So I see this person in your life within the next six months. With fighting spirit, I also want you to know here that this younger man is going to put a lot of effort into being with you. The younger man has this fighting spirit. They're going to try to be in your life for longer than just six months. And I just want to point out group number one, it doesn't matter what gender that you identify as. The younger man is simply a representation of someone with divine masculine energy coming into your life within the next six months and them trying trying to fight to stay in your life. And I see here within Stormy that the next six months is going to bring a lot of different life circumstances that are changing. And that is why it's so great for you to have almost like this emotional and physical outlet here in the younger man that is a contrast to the things that you're figuring out, that you're exploring and going through, especially when people go through phases of spiritual enlightenment and people make it seem like like the growth is something that just happens in such a peaceful manner, but often it can come with a lot of turmoil, a lot of sleepless nights. So that is where I can see here within Stormy, the Five of Swords and the Ten of Swords, that these changing circumstances in your life are being balanced out by having your personal life and your love life be very interesting, very liberating and freeing. I see here within rehabilitation that within the next six months, you will find time to deal with circumstances that have been keeping you in stagnation. So circumstances meaning mental health problems as well. So you may have some sort of medical or mental diagnosis within the next six months. So if you've been feeling like there's something that is just not right, whether whether you're feeling down, low, depressed, or your body is just giving you some sort of issues. Think, for example, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. If your stomach hurts, you have frequent headaches, or there are just other ailments and aches that are difficult, that are not quite letting you live your life the way you'd want to. I want you to know here that within the next six months, you will be able to go to rehab for this. You will be able to rehabilitate your body, whether that be from a substance or substance abuse that you're dealing with, or as mentioned, something a little bit more quote unquote simple or straightforward. You will be able to finally know what's going on. And with that answer, you can take the time to heal. You can take the time to get your 
yourself back to your best self, group number one. And I see here within multiple streams that it's important for you to get second and third opinions, no matter what it is that you're going through. And also recommend this to friends and family members that you care deeply about because misdiagnosing people, it is a real thing in the medical field and it happens scarily frequently. It happens very often. And that's not to blame people who work in that field whatsoever because people are very overworked within the medical field. People have this pressure to perform, to give X amount of diagnoses to so and so many people. And of course, there will be situations in which you're misdiagnosed. So it is important for you to get second and third opinions and to remind yourself here that even if you like a doctor or a healthcare professional, ensure that there are no strings attached to their diagnosis just because it sounds the best to you or just because you like them the most. Make sure that you stay as objective as you possibly can be. And also remind yourself here that with rehabilitation and going through healing, going through putting your body back into a state that you're happy with, where you can live your life without any compromise, is something that you can truly accomplish. Just because you were once sick or you once had a mental illness doesn't mean that you will have to deal with it for the rest of your life. There is always hope and there is always the possibility of getting rid of these things for good and it's important that we focus on that. Of course it is not always possible and it's not always the case but remind yourself here within no strings attached that you too can say to yourself that you're going to move forward without this and that you're not going to dedicate as much of your thoughts and energy to things that don't serve you or things that make your life more difficult and just kind of make the impact of anything that isn't working for you as little as you can possibly make it, group number one. Next up, we've got the Eight of Crystals Reverse. Now, the Eight of Crystals Reverse shows me here that it's like time stops when you're with this person who you're seeing and with whom you have this romantic connection with. So I see in the Eight of Crystals reverse that spending time with them is like taking a vacation it's a breath of fresh air it gives you a break between all of these other things that you're dealing with a very much needed break group number one and that's why this relationship just functions so well and is so healthy and brings you all this fulfillment. I see here within the High Priestess Reverse that there is also a huge part of you that is rethinking your worldview when it comes to religion and spirituality because you're also seeing here there are a lot of really mysterious ways in which you can heal yourself, in which you can use your mind in order to heal your mind, but also physical ailments and I see here within the high priestess reverse that you're taking a lot of interest in that as well and speaking about things where you're lifting the veil you're also understanding that often a lot of procedures that are set out by the medical industry for example are designed to keep people sick and to keep people continuing to depend on certain medicines and on certain services. And group number one, it's not that you're seeing life as one big conspiracy within the next six months. It's about you educating yourself and knowing in which situations you know what's best for you and in which situations you kind of need to take control in order to make sure that you make a full recovery and that you pick healthcare practitioners and people to be in your life who want that too, who want you to have your independence, whether it be mentally or physically. Now, group number one, this is the first part of your reading. Please allow for me to take a moment to clear and energetically cleanse the space so we can move even further into your six-month prediction. So I'll be right back with you so we can get into some more details. Hello, group number one. Let's continue on into your reading about what's happening in your life within six months from now. So let's see what more information that we have about what's coming towards you. Spirit, please let us know what group number one needs to know about their life within six months from now. 
So we've got the raccoon, the dolphin, as well as the cosmic egg. This is a very interesting combination, group number one. Let me tell you why. Within the raccoon, we have an animal that commands truth and that brings any type of unwanted information to light. So I definitely see that within six months from now, anything that you've been wondering about, anything that has been unclear, will all of a sudden become crystal clear. So if you're currently in any legal proceedings or there is a big exam coming up and you're not sure about the end result, know that within six months from now, you will have all the clarity that you need. And I see here within the cosmic egg that it's going to seem like it's very unlikely to go your way. But at the end of the day, things are going to turn out super favorably. The dolphin is actually a spirit animal of happiness, of letting go of worry, as well as enjoying all the in-betweens. So one thing that your guides definitely want you to know and want you to live within the next six months is just practicing being in the moment. If there are situations that are making you anxious, that are making you feel afraid about the future or what may go wrong, just remind yourself that worrying never does any good. Worrying right now isn't going to change anything. It isn't going to ensure that you have a better end result. So remind yourself to embrace the in-betweens and to not let difficult situations or worrying about the future affect your present moment to the point that you can't enjoy the present moment because it's just simply not worth it group number one because at the end of the day that does not change anything so you might as well enjoy all of the little things that excite you and that do make you happy and not let anything cloud your happiness next up we've got the crocodile so i do see here that within the next six months you will find that you're being watched very closely at your work or at your academic endeavors. So be it in school or your place of employment, I can see here within the crocodile that someone is laying low and watching you either because they're interested in seeing whether you're up for the next task and the next challenge or because they kind of want to take the, your place. They kind of want to come for you. So if you're in a place where you have a really great job, do know that there are some people who want that situation. They want the opportunity that you have and they're looking for ways how they can kind of weasel their way in there and if you are currently studying or in school I want you to know here within the crocodile that teachers and people who are grading you are watching you super closely within the next six months and it's important for you to show yourself from your most authentic side people don't want to see who you are pretending to be or who you think they want you to be people want to see who you are as a person and if you're looking to for example get funding for something say a scholarship for school or you're looking for funding for an entrepreneurial project for example know with the raccoon and the crocodile again you're being watched very closely and the best way to success and unexpected outcome that are really favorable, riches, having financial support. The best way you can do that is by being yourself and not trying to be what you think others want you to be because that could be completely wrong and completely off and people can feel when you're being authentic and when you're relaxed and people can feel when you're tense and you're trying to be something that you're not. Next up, we've got memories for you, group one. So within memories, I can see here that within the next six months, months, you will find that there is a deceased pet or loved one that's coming to you in the form of really beautiful memories where you remind yourself of everything that you've been through and lived through, everything they've experienced. I also see these memories in connectivity to, for example, ancestors and how they lived and loved and experienced life, what type of relationships that they had, the impact that they had on the planet. I definitely see here within memories for you, group number one, that within the next six months, you will feel this deep connection to the unseen, to the divine, and also to spirits. Think spirit animals, but also angels, 
and people who are watching over you, who are constantly guiding you and proud of your process, quite frankly speaking. I see here within the owl that following your intuition is your forte in the next six months. And here connecting that to the dolphin, I can see that that is where you can find your happiness. The more you follow your heart and your intuition, the more you will find that you are attracting things that make you happy into your life. So whether that be people or for example, situations, right? Like concert tickets, different types of activities that you can do. The only way how you will even hear of these things, get the tickets, be able to organize it is if you follow your intuition and follow what makes you happy. If you're cooped up in your home all day and you never take the chance to kind of look at what's going on around you, Google and research some events that are going on, talk to friends, coworkers, family members about what they're doing. The more you kind of ignore that or shy away from that, the less life experiences that you will have within the next six months. So follow your intuition, even if it's guiding you in directions that are not very familiar or that are really challenging you to step out of your shell and step out of your comfort zone. I see here within the eight of emotions that you're kind of walking away from who you used to be, group number one. I see that within six months from now, there is definitely a big adjustment that's coming your way. And this type of epiphany, this type of self-development, spiritual enlightenment that makes you walk away from a lot of relationships too. And people will say that you've changed, but that's the whole point. Don't forget group number one, that is the point of life. Change and evolving, right? Developing new traits, learning, constantly growing. If you stay the same for 40 years, then I would say, you know, Maybe it is comfortable for some people, but I would say most of us really do want to grow and experience new things and put ourselves in situations we've never been in before. And in order to be able to do that, you have to leave fears behind. And the cure for fear is action, group number one. The best way to get over a fear is to take action. And the longer you wait and postpone and overthink it, the bigger the fear becomes. Just think about it. If there's like a phone call that you're uncomfortable to make, if you put it off, all of a sudden days or weeks go by and it becomes this huge thing in your head. It becomes this big, uncomfortable task. Whereas if you would have just done it right then and there, even though you thought it was uncomfortable and not something that you wanted to do, it would have already been over with. You would have taken action, cured the fear and moved on with your life. And that is the type of change that I see here within six months from now. I see here within the devil that another thing that's coming towards you is a lot of change when it comes to your relationship with materialism and material things, a completely different worldview of how you see things financially and how you see things that just have to do with items in the earthly realms. I can see that this change in perspective is coming from a place of learning, but also observing. I see that in connectivity to the crocodile. You're paying closer attention to people whom you look up to financially and who you think are successful and you see how they move, the types of things that they do in their spare time, the routines that they have, the types of things that they enjoy doing for self-development and you're kind of mimicking that and I see here within the devil that that really allows you to grow and allows you to expand beyond feeling as though items define you beyond feeling as though you need the latest trendy things in order to fit in I also want you to know here within the devil that astrologically not to be geeky this card connects to the sign of Scorpio and Scorpio is a very intense zodiac sign Scorpio is also a representation of sensuality, of intimacy and death and rebirth and renewals. And that is one thing that we've got here within the next six months when it comes to your relationship with money and your relationship with material goods. I wouldn't be surprised if you sell a lot of your items, group number one, if you get rid of a lot of things. Also growing up, moving away from home, just overall not feeling so connected to a specific place or a specific area, but knowing that home is where the heart is and home can change and home doesn't have to be a specific address. That is one thing that I can see here that's 
coming is a huge change within the next six months for, me, for you, group number one. Next up, we've got the Hanged Muse. Now, the Hanged Muse shows us, again, this shift in perspective. So your guides are definitely confirming that your worldview is changing within the next six months. And I see here within the Hanged Muse that actually this new worldview is an improvement. We've got the sun back here and you being able to see the mountaintops, you being able to see things from a higher perspective. So moving further into your highest self, into who you're supposed to be, being guided by your intuition and what feels right. That is what I can see here for the next six months for you. And this is really serving you. Furthermore, the hanged muse is actually known as the hanged man in the traditional tarot. So if you've got a traditional tarot deck or you wonder what this card is called in a traditional tarot, it's the hanged man. And it corresponds to the number 12 which has the base, base vibration of three, which is a vibration of cooperation, of working with others. And I can definitely see here within the Hanged Muse that any projects that you're engaging in with other people, honestly, group number one, not to call you out, but you're definitely going to be able to relax a little bit more as other people are taking charge when it comes to work projects, when you're involved with them, and you're kind of the one overseeing things. You're kind of the one who's more observant observing rather than doing but there's always a time and a place to be the observer and the one that takes action and within the next six months I can see that there are just some projects that you're better off overseeing and where you're better off just being the one observing making sure everything's going smoothly next up we've got the three of materials now the three of materials kind of really confirms this again we had the base vibration of three with the hanged muse and now we've got the three of materials so the number Number three is significant when it comes to work projects. So look out for the number three as a synchronicity within these next six months in order to help guide yourself, group number one. Furthermore, the three of materials shows me that working together with others is the best way for you to accomplish as much as possible when it comes to the earthly realms, when it comes to your career, but also, you know, sharing notes with people if you're studying, if you're currently in school. I see in the three of materials that if that's something that you usually don't do, or you're kind of shy or socially awkward, I can see that overcoming those fears a little bit, just taking action to overcome those fears is really going to help you to take those leaps and steps forward towards the success that you desire. Because I see that you're not going to be doing everything alone within the next six months. It is really a group effort. And I see that collaborating with other people is how you can get the most done and how you can get the best results here within the three of materials. So if you're kind of really afraid about what other people think of you, remind yourself that we're all human beings. We all kind of feel the same way, right? You're just as afraid of what people think of you as other people are afraid of what you think of them. And we often think of ourselves more than anyone else, right? If you see someone walking down the street, you may look at them for a second, but you're not going to spend that much of your day thinking about them, right? So let's not overthink how others think about us because they're most likely just thinking about themselves, group one. Next up, we've got the three of inspiration, the number three. So if you see the number three, 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 group number one, do know here that this is your angel number. This is the number that is really meaningful for you within the next six months and that will guide you. The three of inspiration shows me here that there are some things that you're setting in motion within the next six months that are going to be truly life-changing. So it's almost like setting up these domino stones. And once you knock one down, it's like this ripple effect, right? It's like this exponential thing that happens, this exponential type of action. So I see that there are some fears that are holding you back, group number one, but it's all about just finding that one trigger that helps you overcome these fears. And then all of a sudden things get so much easier. So group number one, for example, if you have been really afraid to look into some paperwork, some financial workings, just overall things that stress you out, that scare you, that make you feel fearful, know here within the three of inspiration that all you need is that little bit of extra confidence that little bit of extra self-care to remind you of who you are and the fact that you are so capable of dealing with all these things. And one morning you will wake up, you will get to these tasks which you have been procrastinating for weeks or for months and you will simply get them done, group number one, and you will feel 
so elated and proud of yourself and like a huge weight has been lifted off your shoulders. And I see here within the four of materials that what that will do is it will create stability because the number four is the number of stability. It is the number of being able to have work-life balance and sometimes lean back and simply enjoy what you've built. It is the number of solid foundations and creating routines and patterns for yourself which are healthy and which others will never be able to knock down or take away from you. And that is one thing about your wisdom as well and constantly learning, right? The more you learn and the more that you know, the less people can take away from you, the less you are actually in a position where life could go wrong because you've picked yourself up from so many different situations, you've learned so much that you will always have the solution-oriented mindset whenever a challenge arises. Now, group one, I will clear and cleanse the space and come back to you so we can delve even further into your six-month prediction. So I'll catch you in just a moment's time. We're back and ready to receive more divine information from your guides in order to figure out what's coming towards you within the next six months. So let's see what more that we've got for you, group number one. We've got lighten your load, dreams as well as new beginnings. So I see here within lighten your load as well as dreams that you're starting to understand that it's not about working harder. Sometimes it's about working smarter and doing the tasks that are the most important rather than trying to do everything. If you're the type of person, group number one, that often has these endless to-do lists with lots of teeny weeny tasks or tasks that are important but in the end whether they get done or not doesn't really make that huge of a difference to your life you're simplifying that I see that within the next six months you're realizing that there are certain things that you just don't need to pile onto your plate there are certain things that you can just leave out or you can even delegate them to other people that's one thing that I can see here within lighten your load why carry the weight of the world on your back or on your shoulders when actually you can lighten your load very easily? And sometimes it also just has to do with simply accepting help. If you, for example, have a parent or a neighbor who's willing to help, who constantly tells you, hey, if you need any help with something, just let me know. Why not take them up on the offer, group number one? Why not allow for them to do something for you? If they've suggested it, they clearly want to, and there's nothing wrong with accepting someone's offer, especially if they've repeatedly offered something to you. So I see some new beginnings here when it comes to your feelings about accepting help and your feelings about your dreams as well. Because the more that you're open to accepting and receiving help, the more you understand that there's no such thing as defeat. We have our entire lives in order to try things again to get back up when we get knocked down, to stand up whenever life throws a curveball at us. And I do want you to know here within dreams that you never need to give up on them. And you're never too late for anything. You're never too old for anything. You're never not healthy enough for something. You've got enough brain power in order to accomplish your dreams. Because I think a lot of us have this notion that we're either too young or too old for something. That maybe it's not the right time or our health isn't in the right place for it, mentally or physically. That we're not intelligent enough for it. Or maybe that it's just simply not feasible for us for whatever reason. And all of these notions can really just be excuses, right? They can really just be us being afraid of our potential and you and I fearing what will happen if it actually works out, as silly as it sounds. But let's be very honest and blunt, group number one. I think a lot of us never step into our highest potential because it is scary and it's new. And stepping into our dream zone is not necessarily something that is taught within school. I mean, it's not taught at all, right? All that school focuses on is history and everything that was and who we used to be. And it attaches our personalities and who we are to what has happened in the past. But what about a future class? What about a class that helps you to plan your future independently of what has happened in the past and in history? It's important to know about history, but let's not rest in history for too long because the more we focus our energy and our attention on that, the the more we are going to repeat that. There's a reason why people say that history repeats itself, and it is true, but oftentimes we also focus so much on history that that's all our mind thinks of, solutions that people have already had in the past that led to the same results. If we want to be innovative, if we want to create a new way of 
thinking, living a new future for ourselves. We have to be focused on new paths opening up. We have to be focused on new fresh beginnings that have nothing to do with what was already experienced by our ancestors. And that is where I see that dreaming and not feeling like anything is impossible comes into play for you within the next six months. I see this type of visionary energy. Now, friendship shows me here that nurturing your friendships that make you feel inspired is the most important thing that you can do for yourself within the next six months. And I also see that there is a friend that's going to help lighten your load. So a friend that's going to take some responsibilities off your plate, especially if you're, for example, a parent, be it a parent of a child or a pet parent. I see that there is a friend that's going to help you take care of situations in your life where you've got a lot of responsibility and this person will lighten your load so that you can follow your dreams a little more. This friendship could also be a parent that you feel like is your best friend, honestly. That's one thing that I see here, group number one, a parent that just gets you, that understands you, and that wants to be there for you. Also a grandparent, for example, where you've got more than the, just that child and grandparent or child and parent relationship. You have something that feels like a true friendship, like you would be friends with that person even if they weren't family. I see here within well-being that through these new beginnings and lightening your load, you can actually save yourself a lot of headaches when it comes to your health, a lot of unwanted situations in which your health is in a very challenging position, group number one. Now, one thing about a lot of hospital beds that are filled is because a lot of situations can be self-induced. The body is designed to heal itself. The body is designed to survive different types of ailments. But in today's day and age, with all the stress that we've got, all the anxiety, all of the mental burdens and the mental loads that we're carrying, all of that really compromises our immune systems. It compromises our body's ability to heal, to defend itself from ailment and to fight off any type of sicknesses. So I do see that well-being going up within the next six months for you is saving you from a trip to the doctor's office or the hospital even. I see here within the Wheel of Fortune reversed that you are undoing a lot of situations that are going on internally and physically with you because you're lightening your load, because you are not in a space where you're so stressed out anymore. I see within the Wheel of Fortune reversed that you're able to avoid having to deal with serious health implications and that healing yourself, reversing also signs of aging and signs of unhealthy living is a big part of the next six months for you. I see here within the Page of Swords reversed that this is something that you absolutely did not expect and you're most likely not even going to notice this process because it is a gradual and very slow process that's going on within your body where your cells are renewing themselves constantly and rather than renewing themselves with unhealthier cells, cells that are affected by a lot of stress, I see for you, group number one, that what's actually happening is a renewal of your body into a very healthy and pure form. And this may also be the case because there are some new beginnings in well-being where you're completely changing your diet, you're completely changing how you're living day to day, and your health practices are different. So maybe you're taking more walks, you're making sure that you're moving your body more frequently, maybe you're changing your diet to a plant plant-based diet or a vegetarian diet or just overall something that is heavier in fruit and vegetable and leafy greens and all of these things that really serve our bodies. And I definitely see that this is reversing a lot of ailment, a lot of illness that would have been brewing below the surface. Next up, we've got the Queen of Diamonds. Now, the Queen of Diamonds shows me here that this allows you to truly focus on your dreams and aspirations and the 
things that you want to accomplish in the earthly realms, the things that you want to accomplish in your life in the long term financially too. In group number one, I just got to tell you, it's so important that you don't waste this time now in your life and just look for easy ways out or ways to have fun. Being successful and having the types of dreams that you have become a reality, it won't be easy. It won't always be fun. There will be many days where you will feel like quitting or giving up, but that's why it's a dream because it's not something that is just put in your lap that's just given to you. It's something you need to go after. And I see here within the queen of diamonds that within the next six months, your discipline is going to be rising. I can see here that your understanding to learn to love the process of going from point A to point B, and that you're going to understand that the process and the journey, that's like 99% of everything. It's 99% of your dreams, right? Actually reaching the dream is such a tiny fragment of what happens. So you might as well learn to really enjoy everything that it takes to get there and to live in the moment and also to take leaps of faith. Remind yourself that nothing is ever that serious. A hundred years from now, no one is probably going to remember me or you, group number one. No one's going to remember what you said, most likely, unless you really make huge waves. And in order to make huge waves, you're going to have to take lots of leaps of faith. And if you take a leap of faith and it doesn't work out or something doesn't go your way, who cares? Because probably... In just a short amount of time, not even a hundred years, people won't even remember anymore and you can just try again. So take that leap when it comes to love, professing your love, being honest with someone about how you feel about them. Take that leap when it comes to your career. The worst that can happen is that you receive a rejection or that you have to try again. At the end of the day, this is your life to try as many times as you want to and you haven't lost and you haven't failed if you continue trying. It's impossible to lose or fail if you get back up and you try again. Next up, we've got the koala spirit, a group number one. Always be reminded of the fact that spirit has a plan for you. You were not put on this planet in order to just exist. You were put on this planet in order to live group one. You have your own very unique set of talents, your unique set of ways of being and things that you are good at. You have your own type of value that you bring to this world. And it's important that you stop looking around and seeing what other people are doing or what talents they have and comparing yours to theirs. Their talent is what they were given. Group number one, you have your own unique talent and your own unique way of expressing it. Know within the koala spirit that rather than comparing yourself, find a way how you can express yourself. Find a way how you can express all of the creative energy that you've got within you, all of the creativity that you were given. And creativity is something that I think a lot of people feel you either have or you don't. But I want you to know here within the koala spirit that that is not true. We are all born creative as human beings. Already as babies, we find creative ways to problem solve, to get up and keep walking, to find out how we can even eat, how we can take care of ourselves, right? We have to be creative already as children. There is no human being that is born without creativity. It's just that society has different ways of looking at creativity and pushing creativity. You may feel as though your type of creativity isn't pushed as much or isn't seen or valued as much, but whether you're creative with numbers, with music, with art, it's all valid and I want you you to know that it is all part of the reason and the plan that spirit has for you with you being on this planet, with you existing within this realm and this lifetime. I see here within Hidden in Plain Sight that you've got some talents and some pe special powers, group number one, that are hidden in plain sight that you weren't even aware of. These could also be psychic powers. Think to yourself being clairvoyant, clairsentient. I do see here within Hidden in Plain Sight that you may also have a little bit of this psychic medium type of energy and spirit wants you to know within hidden in plain sight that sometimes the biggest 
natural advantages that are given to us are things that we only ever figure out later in life, that we only learn to see once we see ourselves through the perspective that others see us through, once we see ourselves through the eyes of the people who love us and who look up to us, who are proud of us. That's often when we can finally see what's hidden in plain sight, what's been obvious to the world, but has kind of been a mystery to us. People may look at you, group number one, and think to themselves, wow, she or he, they are so beautiful, they are so intelligent, they are so compassionate and caring, or they've got this great charismatic energy and they are just born to be a leader. People look at you and they think different things and you may not even be aware of these superpowers that you have or your ability to enter a room and to make people kind of sense that there is something about you that is special. You need to figure that out for yourself, group number one, by getting to know yourself, giving yourself credit, and also finding confidence within yourself. Finding confidence from within is something that you can cultivate through a spiritual practice. So for example, meditating every day, working out, being in nature, also just taking time to stretch, do yoga, to chant, to be in your own space. You can cultivate more confidence and understanding of who you are when you spend time with yourself and the divine. I see here within the day you plant the seed that an important message that spirit and your guides have for you, group one, is to be reminded to not feel like you are behind when it comes to life and its accomplishments, especially with social media and just the highlight reels of people's lives. It can be really easy to feel as though you are slacking or you're behind or everybody is way ahead of you when it comes to accomplishments. But I want you to know here within the day you plant the seed that the day you plant the seed isn't the day that you harvest the crop, right? The day you plant the seed is the day you start to take care of that seed. You start to nurture it, fertilize it, you water it, you make sure that it has everything that it needs, and most importantly, you wait. Most importantly, you give it time to germinate, to grow, to be rooted in the earth, to find its own kind of space where it can be grounded and where it can solidify its powers, where it can solidify its place in this world and grow roots. That is one thing that you're you're being called to really take seriously when it comes to your own ventures and yourself to remember that good habits, taking care of yourself and building self-confidence and self-love, it's not all going to be here and visible the day you plant the seed. The seed is still going to be under the surface. It's going to be in the dirt. And first, it's going to kind of grow some roots and everything before it starts to grow up and you actually start to see what you planted. So remind yourself that often a lot of change and a lot of progress happens in the unseen. You won't be able to really celebrate or see all of the steps forward that you're taking until you've already truly established and grown something that can't be stopped now, right? That's just continuing to be on its way up. And during that time where you can't see all of the progress and where it feels like you're just putting in the work and the rewards are few and far between, you have to have faith in yourself. You have to trust your capabilities and the fact that you will grow, that you will come out on top and that things are meant to work out for you, group number one. So ensure that you don't give up while the roots are growing, while the roots are settling in their place, because you may miss out on an amazing, beautiful flower that's about to grow that you didn't think was there just because you didn't give it enough time or you didn't allow for those roots to truly find their space and their place. Group number one, leave a little plant emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you're here, that you're receiving your reading, and that you're enjoying it. What I'll do now, group number one, is I'll clear and cleanse the space one more time for you so we can look a little further into your six-month prediction and see what's happening six months from now for you. Hello, group number one. Welcome back. So let's lay some more cards for you to get more information. As mentioned during the intro, I am taking my sweet time when it comes to these six-month predictions because I want you to be as prepared as you possibly can be. Now, Spirit, 
Please let us know what group number one has to know about what's going on within the next six months from now. Please give us the last relevant pieces of information so group one can walk off into the sunset feeling well prepared for these upcoming six months. So we've got getting more information, unlikely as well as trust. So what I see for you within the next six months, group number one, is that it's very important for you to always get that extra piece of information. So if someone is offering you a job, read the fine print. If someone is telling you that they want to invite you to an occasion, try to figure out why and try to figure out if there's something in it for them. Also get more information if there is a business opportunity because an important thing here is to always ensure that you're taking inventory of who is benefiting from situations because it is important for you to always look at different opportunities that are being offered to you from the lens of the person offering these opportunities and asking yourself if it's going to benefit them and whether it will benefit you as well, whether there are mutually beneficial situations here or whether it's unlikely to be a good situation for you. I can see here that one thing about unlikely and getting more information is that you will find that 99% percent of opportunities of things that you can decide to do within the next six months are not meant for you group number one 99 percent of things are not completely on brand with your choices in life with your values with your integrity with your moral compass and it's important that you trust that you're making the right choice when you say no allow me to give you a personal example group number one there are, for example a lot of different brands and sponsorships that i could do but once i get more information i understand this is unlikely to benefit you my subscribers it's unlikely to be something that i would personally use so i trust that by saying no to that opportunity i am inviting in opportunities that are more in alignment that are more on brand for what it is that i stand for and what i do that really aligns with my values and with my morals so by saying no to things that just aren't for you you're actually making room and saying yes to things that are meant to be yes to things that are 100 percent within your favor i see here within weight that patience is something that you will have to have when you turn down opportunities within these next six months but do you know that the weight will be so worth it group number one it is important to learn patience and to understand that most opportunities won't be the right one for you and it takes time to find the perfect situation so whether that be you looking at real estate or looking at a new vehicle looking at a school that you'd like to go to it could also be an opportunity financially to invest right it could be something like building a portfolio when it comes to stocks and you really should take time before you sign the dotted line before you put your money down because in order to really find something amazing you have to be patient if it was so easy and if every opportunity was so great everyone who takes every opportunity by now would be living their dream lives and they're not the ones who are are the ones who are selective and who take the time to look at for example a hundred different homes before they pick the perfect one for them or they pick the perfect investment the ones who are really on top are the ones who look at a million different ways a million different business models and try so many different things before something sticks and they then decide okay this is the right thing this is heading in the right direction but it's all about trying getting more information looking at more ways and ensuring that you don't just take the first best thing that comes your way i see here within the six of swords that this is definitely going to have you in some situations where you know the universe is here and has the great plans for you but you're just kind of like sitting there thinking to yourself okay i'm waiting i've manifested i'm taking my time universe can you hurry up now can you finally just put the thing into my vicinity that I want, that I need, that I've been craving, manifesting, that I know I've put in the work for. So I do see here that there will be some times where you're asking yourself whether the universe is playing tricks on you. 
Now, the devil shows me that it's really important for you, group number one, to stay rooted in your beliefs, to stay rooted in what's important to you, because the devil is definitely a very tempting kind of card. It is a card that shows here you will be tempted to try a different path, to go down a different road, and to maybe also give in to someone who you know is energetically not your best match. Now, the devil could be a person like, for example, an ex, someone with whom you have had a romantic relationship with or you wanted a romantic relationship with and it didn't work out. And I see here within the devil that them coming back and tempting you in a time where you just need to focus on yourself is really selfish of them. And now it's time for you to be selfish, group number one. Now it's time for you to say no to them. There's a reason why this card is showing up within your reading and your guides want us to speak about this. Next up, we've got the moon. Now in the moon, I can see here that you will intuitively know when the situation arises, what to do and how to handle it. So don't be worried or afraid, group number one. Don't be scared. Of course, your ex wants to come back. Of course, someone who maybe ghosted you in the past is all of a sudden trying to figure out how they can get back into your good books. They can feel that you have completely grown and changed as a person. You're the type of person now who thinks things through. You don't just act. You wait when you know that there are better opportunities in line for you. And you've got this patience. You've got this thing going on where it shows that you're not desperate because you truly believe and know that the universe has great things in mind for you. And you're not going to settle for crumbs. You want the whole loaf, group number one. And I see here within the Queen of Pentacles that you are being reminded that you deserve this. If there are people on this planet who have amassed insane amounts of wealth, prosperity, who have changed their health around from a near-death experience to being as healthy as they've ever been, people who have overcome adversity, who have created a life where they can live in harmony with nature and with the people whom they love the most. If there are people who have accomplished all of these things, group number one on this planet, if it's been done before, it can be done again. And if it's never been done, and your dream is one that's really, really unique, really eccentric, really different, know that, again, still, it can be done as long as you believe in yourself. Just think about it this way, group number one. Before there were, for example, planes or cars, someone must have thought of that. And to a world where a vehicle that moves by itself, like it, it may have seemed like magic to people, right? It may have seemed like it is something so wild, so outlandish that it could never be real, but still someone thought of it and someone created it and made it real. And you can do the same for your life. And I just want you to know, group number one, that especially for the things that have been accomplished before that you want in your life. You have got this. You can do this. And for the things that you want that are completely new to this planet, again, sky's the limit. There is nothing that we can't do as long as we believe that we can do it, as long as we look for ways how we can find paths and roads to success with these things that we want. I see here within the new beginnings that within the next six months, you will find that new opportunities opportunities open themselves up to you in a way that you thought was highly unlikely. And I see that these new beginnings will have you entering a new world. It's almost like this new utopia where everything is possible. And you will find that manifestations, it isn't just saying something to yourself. It isn't just wishful thinking. It's actually putting your energy behind things that you want to make a reality. It's actually just amplifying what people do every single day, but to your benefit. People every single day use their mind in order to get things done, whether that be to continue to reaffirm who they are as a person, to get work done, to believe in themselves, to be able to accomplish small tasks. And you're doing the same, but for you, sky is the limit. For you, big tasks and big dreams are what you're going for now because why stop at little things? Why stop 
at small dreams when you can literally just shoot for the moon and you may land somewhere among the stars. I see here within happiness, group number one, that for you, within the next six months, you will find real internal happiness. Happiness coming from a very spiritual place, from a place where no one can rob the happiness from you. So whether you're single in a relationship, whether you've got everyone around you whom you love or you're alone, you are happy with yourself, you're happy with where you're going, and you feel proud of your accomplishments. And this type of living from the inside out is something that you have put a lot of work into cultivating. And I see that within the next six months, you will find so many moments where you are just happy and grateful to be alive and to exist, group number one. And of course, you will have your downs, your lows, your challenges and difficult times, just like everyone else. But I see that more often than not, there will be happiness. More often than not, you will be able to trust in the process. You will be able to trust that you will get to where you need to go. Now, group number one, leave a butterfly emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you received your reading, that you were within group number one, and you watched it all the way to the end. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, group one, what are you doing? We clearly vibe with one another. We just spent the last hour together and you need to be part of the unicorn family. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Group one, I'd like to thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. And if you feel better, more relaxed and prepared for your upcoming six months, after watching your reading then at the start of this video, then you know goal accomplished and this is an awesome place for you to be on the internet because there is a lot of space here on the internet where you can spend an hour and feel miserable about yourself once you're done with that. So if I was able to make you feel better, then that's my only goal that I'm so happy to have accomplished. Now, group one, thank you for sharing this divine time and space with me, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming predictions. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your six-month prediction. You chose the Mystic Mondays Tarot deck and the Carnelian to help guide you for the upcoming six months of your life. So this is a close-up of the crystal of your choice. This is not only a beautiful stone, but the carnelian is really revitalizing and it's a type of crystal that brings more energy into your life. Now you may have intuitively chosen this crystal for that reason, but maybe you just also liked its external appearance, group number two. Both of these reasons are valid, but now let us move into your six-month reading so we can see exactly what's happening in your life and what's coming towards you. You. So I ask of spirit to give us the relevant information that we need right off the get-go here within your pick a card reading. We've got the hanged man that clearly wanted to speak and popped right into your prediction. So within the hanged man group number two, one thing that I can see here is that you have to learn that it's okay to do nothing. I see that within the next six months, it's important for you to realize that when you're stressed and anxious and you don't know what to do, but you want to make a decision. The best thing for you to do is to just take a step back and do nothing. Whenever you rush decisions, you go against your intuition and you may miss out on important information that you need in order to make the best possible decision. So group number two, whether this is an opportunity that you have in business, a job opportunity or something when it comes to your academic career, take your time. Don't let anyone rush you or stress you into making a decision. If you're looking at making a big purchase such as a home or a vehicle and someone is being really pushy and trying to drive you to sign the dotted line, then remind yourself here that this is often a sign to relax, to take a step back, to not allow anyone to push you unnecessarily, and to know that that's a major red flag. I see here within the three of wands that you're taking steps forward that are solid. Within these next six months, you're building a solid foundation for yourself, and the three of wands is all about having foresight. I see that you are a major overthinker and over planner, group number two, but it's actually really working to your benefit for these next six months 
because all of the decisions that you're making are well thought out and stem from a very mature version of yourself. And the Three of Wands shows me here that you're going to take these steps and leaps forward into the sunset and you're going to feel as though every big major decision that you make is one that you're actually happy with and where you can rest assured that you did the right thing. Now the Lover's card is a very interesting one because the Lover's card is not only a card of relationships and love, but it's also one of values and respect. The Lover's card shows me that within six months from now, you will be in a situation where you're with a lover who respects you, with whom you love to be intimate with, and someone who allows you to embrace your sensuality. This is a committed relationship. This is a relationship with someone that you can see yourself with for a very long time. And this is a relationship that wasn't made in haste. This is a relationship that where you took time to get to know the person, where you took time to solidify the situation. Spirit, we want a little more information about this relationship. Please give us what we need. We've got the death card. Now within the death card, I can see here that this is a huge transformation for you. And don't worry, group number two, the death card is not a scary card. Contrary to popular belief, the death card is actually just a card that represents a fresh beginning and the ending of an old cycle. So I see here that something old is going to end in order for the new to come in. So if right now, group number two, you're in a difficult, challenging, toxic relationship or someone is hot and cold with you, ghosting you, kind of not treating you the way that you want to be treated, I want you to know that within the next six months, that will have to come to an end to make room for someone who does respect you and who does treat you with integrity and the type of values and morals that you know you deserve to be treated with. But the death card shows me that, of course, first you have to end something that isn't serving you. Let's see what else we need to know here. Spirit, please supply us the next bit of information. We've got the Princess of Cups. Now, the Princess of Cups here shows me that this is going to be all new to you. I also see with the Princess of Cups that we've got young water sign energy. Think Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancerian energy that is led by intuition, but can also be a little bit moody. So I see here that within the next six months, getting your emotions under control is a big task that you're dealing with. It's definitely something that you're trying to learn more and more. But I do see here within the lovers that just being in a relationship that is healthy and that is actually beneficial to you, emotionally speaking, helps you to finally grow. It helps you to finally kind of figure out how you two can be a healthier partner and spouse and just overall a better person in a romantic relationship. I see here within the cause lettuce that there is going to be a lot of spicy situations behind closed doors within the next six months, group number two. And I see that here in the cause lettuce because this is a symbol of desire. We also have the symbol of cancer here. The cancerian is a very emotional water sign. This is a water sign that is very loyal. So you're going to be in a relationship where there isn't any infidelity and where you're just trying spicy things with each other. And here, this symbol is actually representative of the element of earth. So a very grounded relationship where you can both trust each other and where you don't feel like the other one is cheating, texting someone else, just being intimate with another person. You know that it is an exclusive situation. Next up, we've got the chives. Now divination is an important part of the next six months of your life. Group number two, divination is in tarot and oracle cards. You're going to most likely amass more tarot and oracle cards as well. Incense, things like that, crystals, maybe tarot decks. If you're looking for amazing tarot decks, group number two, don't forget I have published three different decks, so check them out on bowlife.com. The quality of my decks is really impeccable. That's one thing that you guys all know and love and they ship worldwide and they are so unique. They're like boutique luxury tarot and oracle decks. So do know here within the chives that having divination be a part of your everyday life really helps you in order to ground yourself and to make decisions with more confidence. I see here within the day you plant the seed that there are so many different seedlings that you're planting within the next six months that things are going to grow without you even noticing. Okay, so so many different good habits that you're implementing like health 
healthy eating, meditation, working out more. Maybe you're putting a lot of work and effort into your business and you're not going to see the results immediately. I want you to know that this is a slow process throughout the next six months. Remind yourself that the day you plant the seed is not the day that you harvest the crop. And first, when you plant the seed, you have to care for it, water it. The seed is first going to germinate and grow roots before you actually see anything pop out of the surface, right? At first, everything just happens in the dirt. It happens underground. You can't see what's going on. You just have to have faith that you planted a seed that is going to grow and that is going to kind of carry fruit of your labor, right? And that's one thing that I can see here that you're really great at doing within the next six months, group number two. Leave a little sunflower emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you chose group number two, that you're here, and that you understand this analogy. So now that we've got our sunflower emojis going on, let's move further into your prediction. We've also got disconnect. You're doing a little social media detox. It's much needed within the next six months. I can see that there will be a point where you just think to yourself, you have to disconnect, you have to detox. You are no longer going to engage in the social media foolishness. There is so much drama that goes on online, so much unnecessary energy that is just spent in different ways on the internet that doesn't serve us and I see that you're not afraid to disconnect you're actually very confident doing that you're maybe even going to disconnect in a sense of permanently or semi-permanently deleting some accounts that you don't need and I know that this may seem very counterintuitive from someone who works online and whose entire livelihood comes from the internet but disconnecting from it is so important group number two and is so essential for your mental health and for you to be able to be still to be grounded to come back to yourself because when you're constantly scrolling through feeds and you're constantly bombarded with so many different messages so many different beauty standards and ideals and ways that you're supposed to lead your life and highlight reels of people's best moments within their life on this planet, it can really be overwhelming. And know here within Be Still as well as the Hanged Woman that we have the same position twice, this kind of upside down position, this laying down almost position, this relaxed position where you're not afraid to be vulnerable. You're not afraid to say, hey, this is not for me. This is not working out and I don't want this anymore. And in connectivity to the lovers and the death card, I see that that is how any relationship, romantically speaking, that doesn't serve you is going to end. You're actually going to not even feel anxious or mad or sad. You're going to have the this very calm, confident demeanor of just going up to the person and being like, hey, this isn't working for me. This doesn't serve me. This isn't good. I just can't do this anymore. And that is where I see here within the hanged woman and being still that you are completely at peace with your choices because you're not comparing it to someone else's norm or what anyone else is doing. You are doing what's right for you. Next up, we've got family. So within the next six months, you're going to be spending a lot of time with your family. You're going to be spending a lot more time connecting with the people with whom you share this close bond with. And I do see here that in connectivity to disconnecting in the death card, you just have more time the less you're on the internet. You have more time the less you're engaged in relationships that stress you out and don't serve you. So you'll be able to spend time with family. And if you were with a partner who was toxic, whom your family and friends didn't like, and where you were never able to spend time around people who you care about, you always had to choose between the relationship relationship or the people who you love, that's ending group number two. That's not going to be the case within the next six months. You're going to have this unity, this reconciliation between your romantic life and your family life and both of that working seamlessly together. Do know here within the lovers, the death card and the family card that if you are in a long-term relationship and things have just changed, the dynamic has shifted. This doesn't always have to mean the literal death and ending of a relationship. If two people are meant to be together, sometimes they may grow in different directions, they may grow apart, but they can find together as long as someone is willing to allow a part of themselves to come to an end. Maybe you or your partner or you both have developed very toxic, unhelpful patterns, and you will both, of course, have to commit 
to respect each other enough to let those mindsets, those patterns and the pettiness come to an end in order to be able to unite, to reunite your own family and also extended family in order for harmony to be here again. I see here within rest that within the next six months, group number two, you're also going to get a lot of rest. You're going to get a lot of those eight hours every single night where you can just recuperate and your brain can really process everything that's happened throughout the day. And I want you to know here that rest is one of the most important things, really, that you can give your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and to not underestimate how healthy it is to get your eight hours a night and how in the long term, actually, the older you get, the more healthy you will be on an internal and external plane if throughout your life you've given yourself enough time to rest. Now, group two, what I'm going to do is clear and cleanse the space for you, and I'll be right back to move further into your prediction. So just hang tight and we'll get more information about the next six months of your life. Welcome back group number two. Let's move further into your six month prediction so we can figure out all of the extra details that your guides and spirit has for you that you must know about. So let's see what we've got going on here. We've got the Seven of Cups. I see here in the Seven of Cups that within six months from now, you will have a lot of different options and choices. The Seven of Cups shows us that not only are you manifesting and kind of engaging in a lot of future planning, but this will actually result in a lot of opportunities being presented to you. So while some may have thought that you're just practicing practicing wishful thinking group number two actually what you did is become a master manifester and within six months from now you're going to have a lot more opportunities than a lot of the people who are around you a lot of your peers a lot of your age mates and that's definitely something here in the seven of cups that you're going to be really excited and proud about next up we've got the king of pentacles as well as the knight of wands so we've got two people here within your life the king of pentacles is basically the king of earth signs think capricorn taurus or virgo they're most likely older than you they're someone who is sophisticated they've figured out their life they have a good amount of life experience and when it comes to business they don't play games the knight of wands is the knight of fire signs think aries think leo think sagittarius they're a very temperamental type of person they're spontaneous they're fun so these are maybe people with whom you're working with or collaborating with as i see here within the seven of cups that with these opportunities that are presenting themselves to you, you're able to make new connections with other people, right? Because often when opportunities come into your life, that means opportunities to form new business relationships, acquaintances, as well as friendships. And those are the things that I see here in the King of Pentacles and the Knight of Wands. So these two individuals have masculine energy. That does not necessarily mean that they identify as male, but they are just overall go getters and these are the types of people that you're attracting because you two are exuding go-getter type of energy group number two next up we've got the two of swords now the two of swords shows me here that indecision is something that you're dealing with within six months from now because there are so many different options and possibilities that you can go for as we have presented here in the seven of cups right it's like which one do you go for and it's difficult because they all look good. Every opportunity has, of course, its pluses and its minuses. And I do definitely see in the Two of Swords and the Seven of Cups that you're taking your time to make decisions and indecision sometimes makes you postpone certain things, but that's okay. Know here within the Two of Swords that an important part of this indecision is also kind of figuring out where you may have some blocked emotions that you have to deal with because often, in difficult times or in times of indecision, you can actually learn a lot about yourself and why this is even happening. Next up, we've got the Three of Pentacles. Now, the Three of Pentacles shows us here that there is some teamwork, some planning, a lot of competent energy around within six months from now. So if right now you're working in a situation where you feel like your team isn't competent or things aren't flowing properly, 
maybe in your own business, you also feel like there are certain blockages. I see that you're transforming this situation because within six months from now, you're going to be working in a team that works seamlessly with one another that can properly accomplish goals that they've set out to accomplish where there isn't any type of drama, there isn't any type of pettiness. It's just all business and we're just all focused on the bottom line. That's what I see in the Three of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. Next up, we've got the Eight of Swords and the Ten of Swords. So I do see here that there are some people who are worried about you taking their place and taking over group number two. Okay, so if you work in a competitive work environment, know here within the Eight of Swords that a lot of people are definitely overthinking your talents. A lot of people are definitely looking at you and a little bit fearful that you will take their place or kind of overshadow them. And that's where I see here within the Ten of Swords that it's important for you to know that while a lot of people will want to be friends with you, once you are becoming more successful, once things are working out in your favor, there will also be people who feel a little jealous, okay, who feel a way about that group number two. And dealing with these situations isn't always easy, but remind yourself here to not overthink when you can feel that someone is clearly a little jealous or a little butthurt about your success. I see here within the target that you're being called to remain a goal-oriented person, group number two, to never waver from your goals and aspirations no matter what. There will be highs, there will be lows, there will be times where you feel like you cannot keep going. But I see that within six months from now, being a goal-oriented person is your choice. There is no other way for you, the other option would be, well, to lead a life that is a little more mundane, right? That is just a little less passionate. And that's not something that you're up for. So I do see here within the target that you're keeping your passion and your enthusiasm alive and going. Let's see what other messages that spirit has for us in regards to your next six months. We've got the scales. So this is about keeping your life in balance and also realizing that you need a little bit of time to switch off and have fun. I see a lot of indecision when it comes to balance, when things are going well in your career. Now, indecision with your career and work-life balance, it's a very simple thing. When you're doing well in your career, it's hard to want to take your foot off of the gas pedal. It can be difficult to want to take a step back because obviously you don't want to lose momentum. You want to keep driving forward. And that's where I see here within the purse that you can actually pay close attention to your finances and then kind of plan ahead. The closer attention you pay to your finances and the more you make really smart decisions, the more you will actually find that, hey, Work-life balance is possible. I just need an amazing overview over my finances and what's going on for me in that regard. So I do see here within the purse, the scales, and the target that you're trying to figure out how you can not only continue to be successful when it comes to your work, but also successful in your personal life, of course. The peacock shows me that within six months from now, you're going through a physical transformation as well, group number two. So think a glow up, think physically transforming in a way that you're not afraid of how others may see you or look at you. You're not afraid to stand out. The peacock definitely shows me here that there is a situation for you six months from now where you feel as though when you enter a room, heads turn, but you don't mind. The peacock shows me a lot of confidence. It shows me that if there's something that bothers you within six months from now, you will have changed it. Be it, for example, a haircut. It could be a procedure that you're going Going through a non-surgical one or a surgical one and I see here within the peacock that you're doing it for yourself the goal here is to do things that make you feel good not things that please other people I do also see in the peacock the target and the purse that if there is a surgical or non-surgical procedure that you have been wanting to do and that is not even necessarily just something to change your looks it could just be something to amp your confidence for example 
hyperhidrosis, which is like an excessive amount of sweating, that can make a lot of people very uncomfortable. And it's not something that others necessarily see or know about you, right? And treating things like that can really amp up your confidence. So that's what I mean when I say it doesn't just have to be a physical alteration. It could also just be something that makes you more confident that other people wouldn't even necessarily know about. And I see here within the purse that you're putting money aside, you're saving, you're making sure that you can do these things for yourself within six months from now. Next up within the owl, I can see here the intuitive side of you is the one who's going to make the decision decision of what healthcare practitioner, what doctor's office you're going to go to, whom you're going to trust when it comes to this revamp or this personal glow up that is meant to increase your confidence. Because of course, you want to be very watchful and mindful of whom you trust, especially when these things are connected to your health, because you want to ensure that you go to someone who's going to leave you feeling better, not someone who is going to create more difficulties for you in the future. Next up, we've got the whale. Now in the whale, I can see here that there is a lot of this family oriented kind of vibe around within six months from now in conjunction to the scale. I do also see that there may be some changes when it comes to your weight. So it could be weight gain, weight loss. I see here within the whale that your emotions are really tied to your eating patterns and eating habits. And within six months from now, you will find that you definitely need to pay close attention to your diet because it fluctuates and changes depending on what you're going through. And you want to ensure that you remain healthy and at optimum health, no matter what's going on around you or what you may be experiencing emotionally speaking, because good health physically can help your health emotionally as well. Next up, we've got the buffalo. Now, the buffalo shows me an abundance of just things six months from now, an abundance of material prosperity too. The buffalo shows me here that life is abundant and limitless for you and this is one thing that you're really noticing and seeing within six months from now and I can see a lot of big heavy opportunities monetarily okay with big heavy opportunities I mean you're able to finally pull in numbers that you dreamt of group number two you're finally able to do things that you weren't sure were even possible for someone like you or someone with your background that's what I see in the buffalo and the whale but you're open to receiving i see that within six months from now whether that is a compliment a job offer someone offering you a physical gift or just something nice i can see that you're open to receiving and that is a big game changer a lot of us when we receive compliments we kind of shrug them off or we discredit them and whenever you do that you're kind of discrediting yourself a little bit group number two and we need to vow right now to stop doing that we need to vow to accept and take every single compliment that we get and accept it wholeheartedly because the person who is giving you who is paying you the compliment wants you to receive it and wants you to enjoy it. So let's do that. Even if it's first cringy for ourselves, even if it's for the other person, let's just accept the compliments, let's take them, let's just say thank you and not feel any way about it. Because one thing about not taking compliments on board is that in the long run, it definitely accumulates and kind of strips away your confidence. The more that you say, oh, no, no, I'm not worthy of something as little as a compliment, a little verbal appreciation, okay? You are worthy of it, group number two. And I want you to leave a little peacock emoji below in the comment section as a symbol of you confirming the promise that we just made to ourselves that we will accept compliments that we will be open to receiving, we will practice receiving opportunities and compliments and gifts. So within six months from now, we will feel completely confident in being this new version of ourselves that knows their worth. Your guides and your angels are truly with us right now, group number two. It is undeniable. The cards are speaking for themselves. Knowing your worth is definitely something that is being practiced within six months from now. And I do see here that within six months from now, 
you will just feel so much more energized in who you are and knowing your worth and not feeling as though you're being too pompous. That's one thing that I see that you kind of tend to feel too easily group number two, that you're doing too much or that you're being too extra, too lavish, too outlandish, too confident, too loving of yourself. Group number two, you can never have enough of those emotions and feelings in your life. And if anyone is bothered by it, that is their issue, not yours. You're not harming anyone by loving yourself and by being open to receiving because you're not asking for anything with receiving. This is something that is being offered to you and you're simply graciously accepting. I see here within crystal clear that within six months from now, a lot of situations are going to be completely clear to you that are a little wonky, that are a little foggy right now. And I see that this clarity is coming in the sense of your glow up. It's coming in the sense of what's happening with some of your physical changes and physical attributes. And I see that this clarity is something that is definitely going to give you that extra confidence too. So remind yourself here that if something bothers you within six months from now, you're definitely going to change it through exercise, through a procedure, through a different lifestyle. I see here within there is always a way that rather than feeling like you've bumped your head in a situation, you are finding different ways to be solution oriented. I see within there is always a way that right now, maybe times are tough, group number two. And I get it. I understand there are various ups and downs in life, whether it is in your personal life or in your business, in your professional life. And I see here within, there's always a way, the buffalo, the whale, being open to receiving that in the past, you may have kind of felt as though it is too difficult for you to get out of the situation you're currently in, financially or emotionally. But within six months from now, I can see some big changes because with every little win, you're gaining some confidence. You're reminding yourself that there is a path, there is a way to move forward, there is an opportunity for you to create the life that you want and that people have come from the gutter, from even worse situations, right? And that is not to discredit your struggles, group number two. That is something we will never do on this channel. But it's just to remind you of the fact that regardless of your background, where you've come from, or how many people have told you that it is too difficult to do or that there isn't a way, that isn't true. What is true is what you believe to be true, a group number two. Next up, we've got a dream journal. So I definitely see you journaling your dreams. I definitely see you taking hold of your dreams, writing them down, jotting them down, making sure that you're paying close attention to them and also that you're putting your thoughts and your energy where you want to go, not where your fears are. And I do see here within your dream journal that the more you actually write down your dreams and your goals, the more you will find that they can come true for you. Connecting with fire or doing a fireball ritual is an opportunity for you to also like let go of fears. So by connecting with fire, one thing you can do is write down all of your fears, the things you're worried about, and literally light them on fire. Literally connect with fire by having some sort of fire outside. Maybe you have a little burning bowl ritual you can do in your garden or backyard. Just make sure you're safe, group number two, because one time I nearly lit my entire house on fire doing this. So try to do this outdoors, seriously. Take it as a little piece of advice from someone who has experienced um, how scary it can be to do this indoors. So make sure here with Connect With Fire that you're doing it in a safe environment, preferably outside, and just burn those pieces of paper of the things that you want to let go of, the things you want to leave in the past, and then really let them go. These can also be unhelpful thoughts, thoughts that diminish who you are and what you're capable of. These can be excuses that you've made up, like saying that it's not the right time, you're too old, you're not smart enough, you don't have this, that, or whatever opportunity in order to make the best of your situation. No, that doesn't need to be group number two. I definitely see here that you can do a lot more than you've given yourself credit for. And this is just the start. We're just getting started on your journey to success, group number two. So don't underestimate what life still has in store for you. So what I'm going to do now, group number two, is I'm going to clear and energetically cleanse the space for you. And I'll be right back so we can move even more deeply into what's happening for you within the next six months. Welcome back, group number two. 
Let's move further into your six month prediction, shall we? Let's see what else is coming towards you within six months that you need to know about. We've got the beetroot, we've got the myram, as well as the nasturtium. So I see passion, happiness, and victory. There are different areas of your life that we've got to address here. So we'll have this little segment here for where passion is going on. We'll have this little area for happiness and this little area here for victory. So we can add different cards into these columns to figure out exactly where there will be passion, where there will be happiness, and where there will be victory. Spirit, let us know what area of group number two's life is going to be filled with passion within the next six months. We've got the ring. Okay, so within the ring here, I can see that a marriage will take place either romantic or in business. So there's a lot of passion when it comes to your business or your personal life. And really solidifying a connection, okay, like a marriage, an engagement, you get the idea. So this is where passion is taking place. This is where there's a lot of love. There are feelings that are heated in the best possible way. And there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of this infatuation. Spirit, let us know in which area of life group number two is experiencing a lot of happiness. We've got the unicorn. So within the unicorn, my beautiful unicorn baby, I can see that using your intuition to make beneficial changes, that is where there's a lot of happiness. And you making choices based on what you want, not based on what you think you should want or based on what you think you should be doing. So group number two, do know here that making your choices independently of what anyone else thinks, that is where true happiness resides within six months from now. That is where you find that whenever you make a choice, you can feel happy with it, you can feel proud of it, and you don't second guess it, you don't overthink it. I want you to know here within the nasturtium that we're moving on to, we've got the master number 44. The master number 44 is a number of stability. It is a number of manifesting as well. And I want you to know that the master number 44 is here to help guide you towards victory. So if there's something that you are struggling with right now, group number two, Look out for the synchronicities with the number four. So let's see here within the broken wishbone and victory, or let's say the nasturtium, what's going on for you. So I can see that you will be victorious with a wish that was not granted prior to this reading. So there is something that you tried to do that didn't work out for you, group number two. You know what it is, group number two. Hold that thought right now. And do know here that what we're receiving as a message is that within six months from now, you will be victorious at that thing that you tried to accomplish that didn't go the way you wanted it to at first, but now, or shall I say six months from now, all of a sudden you were able to be victorious. So whether that be launching a different career, whether that be bringing your love life to that next level, or upping your game professionally, managing to pass that examination or test with flying colors, I definitely see here that there is going to be a big change that is a victorious one where you're finally going to get your way in a situation that before, was not granted, that did not work out in the past. And when things don't work out, group number two, it's not that you're not meant to have it. It's not that you're not meant to be successful. It's simply the universe kind of nudging you and pointing you in a different direction. If something doesn't work out the way you've tried to make it work out in the past, try something else. Try moving towards another area, towards another variant of taking action. Next up, we've got the wolf. And we'll move back to the side of the reading where we're talking about passion. I see here within the wolf that there's a lot of passion when it comes to family and family building. So talking about children, talking about building your own little family, that's one thing that I can see here with the ring, as well as the beetroot, the passion that we have going on here. And just overall, this marriage, this connection that you're going to have with another person that is solid, that is meant to be, and where there is a commitment. What else does spirit want us to know here about the beetroot, the ring, and the wolf? We've got the black egg. So within the black egg, I can see that there are a lot of unknowns that you don't mind when it comes to the ring and the passion. And 
this brings a very mysterious edge to this part of your life within six months from now. So your love life is always going to be very interesting. It's always going to be filled with infatuation. The same comes with your business. Of course, with the business, it's a little easier because things are always changing. Of course, things are always mysterious, right? Of course, there are always unknowns and a lot of opportunity in the unknowns. But I do see here that with this passion within your love life, there's a big part of you that is just very eternally grateful for the fact that things are always interesting and there's this kind of love and infatuation and attraction that's mutual. Next up, we've got the lizard. Now in the lizard, I can see here that part of this passionate ring situation has to do with you being the type of person who has patience in these situations and can play it cool sometimes. Now, one thing that I do want you to know here within the lizard is that on the inside, you may be freaking out. You may be thinking to yourself, oh my God, this is not actually happening. I'm so excited. I really want this to be a situation that works out for me. I really want this marriage or this engagement to go perfect. Perfectly. But on the outside, I can see you being cool as a cucumber. Nobody would ever suspect what's going on on the inside. And that's where I can also see that a lot of the passion and a lot of the fun comes from because you're just the type of person who has a lot of unexpected surprises to them as well. You keep certain things to yourself, but when they do bubble to the surface, it's like, oh, wait, where did that come from? So let's move further on to the Mariaram as well as the unicorn and the areas of your life in which there's a lot of happiness. So your decision making and your intuition is bringing you happiness. And I see here within the four of cups that intuitively deciding whom you want to keep in your life and who you're stepping away from, that is going to bring you a lot of happiness. And I do see here within the four of cups that there are some individuals that within six months from now are no longer going to be part of your life. And those are the individuals that make you feel lonely. Group number two, being alone and feeling lonely, those are two different things, right? You can feel lonely in a room full of people. And maybe you've experienced this. Maybe you have been in a room full of people, even in a room with familiar faces, and you still felt alone. You still felt lonely, like you just were not even surrounded by anyone. And so Feeling lonely has nothing to do with presence or how many people are around you. And I see here within the Four of Cups that any friends or family members that are surrounding you and, you know, there's noise coming out of their faces, out of their mouths, but somehow you still feel alone and unsupported. I definitely see that making the intuitive decision to remove those relationships out of your life is going to serve you because the Three of Wands shows me here that you will be better able to focus on relationships that do uplift you where you feel like there are possibilities to feel better after you've hung out with that person, that there's always this chance for growth, for happiness, for keeping your head up. That's what I see here within the Three of Wands. And the Four of Pentacles shows me here that you're being very protective over your time and your resources. I see that within six months from now, if there are people who ask you for favors, be it financially or when it comes to your time, you're not just going to say yes to things, group number two. You are very picky and you're learning to say no. That's one thing that I see with the Myram and the Unicorn. You're learning to you know yourself and also know that if you don't want to do something now, you're most likely not going to want to do it later. And you're not just going to say yes to people's requests because you value your time and your energy. And it's more important for you to put yourself first rather than to make others feel better about themselves first, right? Rather than to adhere to what someone else may want. Next up, we've got the ace of voices for you. And I want to talk about the nasturtium and the areas of your life where you'll be victorious and more specifically something you attempted in the past that was unsuccessful but now the wish is able to be granted that's what I see within six months from now so here within the ace of voices I see that a completely new way of thinking it is, is what is needed in order for this wish to be granted to you in order for things to work out and the eight of materials shows me that also honing your craft a little bit more is what's necessary so group number two for example, when I failed my driver's exam, 
I had to go back and hone my craft and also change my mindset. That is the type of vibe that I want you to know here within the aid of materials and the ace of voices that your guides are trying to communicate to you about. So for one, you will have to work harder on your technique. Go back and figure out why it is that this wish wasn't granted or this thing that you attempted didn't work out or why you failed. And also, you're going to have to rework your mental space. Just because something didn't work out one time doesn't mean that it won't work out again. Just because something didn't go your way at that point in time doesn't mean that it can't go your way in the future. And I see here within the Three of Inspiration that once you have mastered the art of never allowing for negatives or uncertainties to make you feel as though it has to go down a negative path. Once you've done that, once you've changed that mindset and you've got this winner's mindset, it is like a domino effect. It's like it just can't be stopped. It is something that will exponentially grow, that will exponentially serve you and where all of a sudden you'll feel as though sky is the limit in your life. And the more you truly believe that sky is the limit, the more you will see that yes, sky is the limit for you and you can accomplish anything that you want to as long as you think you can the saying the quote of you know he who thinks he can is right and he who thinks he can't is also right is truly one of those things that i feel is so obvious and so easy and seems so hidden in plain sight but a lot of us don't take this seriously that the things that we believe we can do can happen and can manifest and the things that we don't believe we can do we will not be able to manifest and we will not be able to figure out. And it's so important that you remember that your mindset really matters and whether you believe something will work out is also imperative to your success, whether that be with an opportunity in business that you're retrying, repracticing, or whether that be being victorious and finally overcoming a challenge with your health, group number two. Your mindset is everything. It helps you to heal. It helps you to move forward. Forward. It helps you in order to create the life that you desire because if sky's the limit for you, then sky will be the limit for the universe and for other people for you as well. But you have to be the first one putting yourself out there and showing that this is what you believe, that you truly believe in yourself and your aspirations and what you're able to accomplish. Now, group number two, I will now clear the space one more time for you and come back so we can move into the last important messages about your life within six months from now. So hold tight and I'll be right back to guide you into the final bits of information that your angels want you to know. Hello group number two. I can't wait to move even further into your prediction about what's coming within six months from now so we can figure out truly all the information that you need to know so you can feel as prepared as possible for the upcoming six months. Spirit, what does group number two need to know right now? We've got an epiphany. I can see you seeking clarity and finding clarity. I can see the sense of spiritual enlightenment and seeing things in a way that you've never been able to see them before. I can see an epiphany that comes from a place of true growth and that comes from a place of being open-minded. I can see an epiphany of your self-confidence and self-worth. Next up, we've got self-reliance for you. So I can see here that you're also not afraid to do things by yourself and you've got this big epiphany that in situations where life feels really hard or hopeless, you have maybe sometimes looked around for other people to save you, group number two. And this is normal. I think this is a coping mechanism we all kind of resort to at times because as children, as infants growing up, when things didn't go the way that they should, whom did we look to protection for? We looked to our parents, to our mothers, to whoever was there to take care of us if we were fortunate enough to have a caretaker, right? And I see here that you're realizing more and more that when you're an adult, when you're at a stage in your life where you can no longer kind of rely on others to protect you and be there for you every step of the way or most steps of the way, you have to figure out a way of self-reliance and not being afraid to do things by yourself. You have to in a sense, become confident in your abilities to get yourself out of difficult situations and remind yourself that sometimes nobody's going to come and save you and you just have to figure things out for yourself. And that can be a hard pill to swallow. It can be a difficult thought to 
come to terms with and to be at peace with, but I definitely see here within self-reliance and your epiphany that this is something that you're realizing is just a truth. Next up, we've got leadership. I see that rather than crumbling or feeling like life is bleak or difficult or hard or dark, I see here within leadership that actually what you're doing is you're setting goals, you're setting intentions, and you're realizing that while you need to figure things out for yourself, you have to be self-reliant and unafraid to do things for yourself and not like wait for others to come and save you. The same goes for other people, right? Each individual has that same responsibility. Each person on this planet needs to be a leader in their own life if they want to get anywhere. And you're realizing that this also kind of gives you a lot of personal power because there are a lot of people who never step into their leadership role, who never set goals for themselves. And I can see that just by you being one of those people who write down their goals, you're already putting yourself in like the 1% of people who actually take the time to plan their success and put themselves on the path to success. Because the more that you actually plan and speak it into existence and write it into existence, the more the universe and your mind will highlight ways how you can get to where you're trying to go. Because if it's not fresh on your mind what you desire, if you're not trying to find ways to get to where you're trying to go, then manifestations are just words. They're just empty words, right? But the more that you really do prime your mind to find solutions, the more you will find that all of a sudden, miraculously, ways and solutions appear in your life. But it makes sense because you're priming your mind, your head, your brain to look for things that confirm what you're setting out to do. I see here within celebration that within six months from now, there's definitely going to be a big party that you're attending where you can just let go and have fun. So this celebration could be an anniversary, it could be a wedding. I see that within six months from now, it can also be a celebration of someone receiving a degree, for example, or a big promotion. But I do see that either way within celebration, it's a really fun time for you. So if you're someone who gets very anxious when they are be being celebrated. This is most likely not like your birthday or your celebration because you wouldn't be able to let go and have fun as much as we see here within the celebration card, right? If you're an introvert, if you're the type of person who's really shy, then this is another person's celebration where all eyes aren't on you and you can truly let loose and let go. But if you're the type of person who doesn't mind being the center of attention and who doesn't mind being the person who is being celebrated and who is being being looked at six months from now then know that this is a celebration for you but the core value and meaning of this is being able to let go and have fun so either way that is what's happening within six months from now whether that means that you are being celebrated or you're celebrating someone else's accomplishments it's about having the best time ever the ten of diamonds shows me here that when it comes to the earthly realms and your finances you're completing something within six months from now that was a big target and a big goal so it could for example be a goal of saving x amount of money it could also be a target or a goal that you had for yourself when it comes to reaching certain financial targets at your job. And I see here within the 10 of diamonds and leadership that this will increase your confidence for the next six months because you know, okay, I was able to do this. So now let's see what I'm able and capable of doing next. The 10 of diamonds and the leadership card definitely shows me here that it's your time to shine. It's your time to set new goals and new intentions for yourself because you will outgrow goals very quickly. A lot more quickly than you ever expected, especially when you engage in writing those goals down. That's when you really make them a reality. Now, the Eight of Swords shows me a little bit of fear of success. This sounds so weird, right? Group number two, fear of success. But I think a lot of us, when we really think about it, we procrastinate situations or don't really look into opportunities because of fear of success, because we're so worried about what if it does work out? What if things do go my way? That's one thing that I see here within the Eight of Swords that you're realizing can happen sometimes. And in connectivity to the self-reliance card, I can see that within six months from now, you're also kind of realizing that when you have to rely on yourself, you can't wait for someone else to push you to do the right thing. You have to push you 
to do whatever needs to be done. And in the chariot reverse, I see that until you're able to embrace that, things will be stagnant and a lot slower for you. I see here within the chariot reverse that you have to ensure that your wants and needs, but also your goals, that everything is in alignment, that your morals as well as your integrity align with the things that you're trying to do, because otherwise there will just be too many mixed signals for the universe to be able to help you out with anything. So ensure that what you're working on is in alignment with your end goal, with what you're trying to accomplish. And one thing that I would recommend for you to do is to write down what you think your end goal or your purposes in life. If that is helping people, write that down and work from there to what you're doing now. So what I mean by that, for example, is if you work in the medical field, if you, for example, are a teacher, a nurse, just someone who helps other people and you feel like that is your life mission, Think of the big picture, right? Your big picture is to help people. And then you want to think about how you can do the most possible within your field, within the area of your expertise to help, to really fulfill that purpose, rather than just looking at your ex area of expertise and thinking, how can I be better? How can I earn money? No, think about how you can reach that bigger goal, the goal that's bigger than you, that's bigger than accomplishments, accolades, or money, which is helping people, right? The thing that is above all else. That is what I can see here that focusing on will get you to that next level within six months. Here within the five of diamonds reverse, I can see that what will then also happen is that money troubles and money worries will dissipate. The Five of Diamonds Reverse shows me that situations in which you were also kind of wasting money are going to come to an end because you're no longer doing that. You're no longer allowing for that to happen, not only because you're focusing on getting your finances intact, but also because you're making it to that next income level. We've got Meditation Brings Answers for you next, group number two. So I do see here within Meditation Brings Answers that there is a huge huge opportunity for you to receive a lot of clarity, to gain a lot of insight through meditation. I really do recommend that you make meditation a daily practice, group number two. This is something that I've struggled with, but right now meditation is on my daily to-do and goals list. And no matter whether it is a five-minute meditation or a 10-minute meditation, I am sitting down and I'm receiving the clarity from the universe and from my guides about what to do next. I see here that what you also must engage in is communicating clearly because within six months from now, you will have received not only information through meditation, but I can also see here that the more you communicate clearly what you desire, the more synchronicities are going to show up within your life that are pointing you in the direction of your goals. But in order for this to happen, you have to be in tune with your highest self. You have to be in tune with your guides and your angels and communicating what you desire, but also communicating words of gratitude is an important factor within this. I see here within unlikely that the less you engage in, for example, gratitude journaling or just talking about all the things that are already going amazingly well, the less likely it will be for you to accomplish more because it seems as though, well, the things that are in your life are already not enough. You know, you're already not grateful for those. So why should there be anything else in your life? That's kind of what you need to look out for, what you need to be really careful of, that you never fall into this space of taking things for granted. I see here within Peaceful Resolution that group number two, while our guides in the universe have definitely been calling us out and being very honest with us about what we should focus on and what we should kind of stay away from within the next six months, there will be a peaceful resolution to any issue that right now is at the top of your mind. So that could be a legal issue that needs to be resolved. It could be something that needs a resolution in your personal life, you know, a relationship that has 
has been getting under your skin or keeping you up at night. Know here that a peaceful resolution is on its way and that too will help you celebrate different situations with a lot more vigor, a lot more life force because you're not constantly thinking about things that worry you and things that make you feel as though life is so difficult or life is in a place where you just simply can't enjoy because you've got so many worries, right? So within six months from now, I can see that shedding situations that are unlikely to be helpful is what you're learning to do. You're learning to be more in the moment, to meditate on a daily basis, and to communicate clearly to your guides, your angels, God, the universe, whatever you'd like to call it, what you desire in order to attract that into your life. Now, group number two, we are at the end of your reading, and I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it insightful, that you enjoyed spending all this time with one another just vibing with your angels let me know below in the comment section don't be shy leave a little lion emoji down there to let me and others know that you made it all the way to the end of group number two don't forget to thumbs this video up as well to let me and the youtube algorithm know that you enjoyed this video just as much as i enjoyed making it and group two i can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming predictions Hello group number three and welcome to your six month prediction. You chose the Divine Animals Oracle in connectivity to the Cognac Calcite. This is the gorgeous Cognac Calcite. It is absolutely stunning and this is a very revitalizing, re-energizing type of stone, which may be why you chose this crystal, but maybe you just also loved its appearance. However, now let's move into what's happening for you within the next six months. I call in your angels, your spirits and guides to help us figure out exactly what you need to know about the next six months so you can be as prepared and as relaxed as possible, group number three. So let's see what spirit has to say for you. We've got the wolf, we've got the swan, as well as the bison. So within the wolf, I can see that you will find that within the next six months, you're stepping further into your personal authenticity. And I see here in connectivity to the swan that your unique beauty is what you're feeling feeling more and more comfortable with. And you know why? Because within the bison, it's very clear that you've got more rituals going on for yourself that are helping you create a lot more self-confidence than you've ever experienced in the past, group number three. So within the next six months, your self-confidence is going to be on a completely different level. And I also see here within the swan and the wolf that if there's anything you want to change about your external appearance, you're going to do so. You're going to move ahead with it. This could be a surgical or a non-surgical procedure. Either way, I see that you're doing so from an authentic place, not because you feel inclined to because of other people, but because it's something that bothers you. And I do see here within the bison that you spend a lot of time thinking about whether this is the right decision for you or not. And do know here that this procedure or this change that you're doing physically, it could also be dyeing your hair. It could also be a change in your workout regimen to completely transform how you feel in your body and how you look. That goes hand in hand for you. When you feel like you look good, you also feel amazing on the inside because there's nothing that's stopping you from feeling confident and feeling like anything that you do is just 10 times more effective and fun because you know that you love what's going on with you externally too. And one thing that I definitely want to always include within our readings is the fact that the external plane is important, the material plane is important, money is something that we cannot get around. These things are part of our day-to-day -day lives and it would be inauthentic to pretend like we just live in the spiritual kumbaya world because we don't. All of these things matter and they make a difference in our psyche and how we feel mentally. I see here within the rhinoceros that you're the type of person who does things in moderation. So we don't need to worry about you group number three doing something really crazy or changing yourself in a way that's going to be too drastic i see that within six months from now you actually find that putting a little bit of extra effort in your external appearance be it lotionizing your body every single day taking that extra step in your beauty regimen just to show yourself that extra self-love is the moderation that you need every single day not just rushing through your routine in the morning brushing your teeth 
teeth, getting ready, running out of the house. No, waking up 10 minutes earlier just to give yourself some you time, just to show yourself how much you love yourself, how much you appreciate yourself, and taking care of yourself externally, reflecting on your internal viewpoint. Because group number three, I remember there were so many days where I got up and got straight to work. I got straight to filming, editing, whatever the task of the day was, working on bow life, creating jewelry, decks, writing, you get the idea. Without taking care of myself, without taking time to do a skincare regimen, to have a tea, to read a book, to lotionize my body, to take a shower, and the days where I take care of myself first are the days where I feel the best and the most productive, and that's what I see here that you're sticking to within the next six months. Within the carrot, I can see that the more you put yourself first, the more you see very clearly that putting yourself first actually is what allows you to thrive in life. Furthermore, we also have the symbol of Virgo here, which is an earth sign. It is a practical, modest sign. And I can see that you're a very modest person, group number three. So it is a challenge for you to put yourself first. It is a challenge for you to say no to other people because you always want to be of service. You are very detail-oriented and service-minded, and you always want to be useful. And maybe you have some strong Virgo placements within your birth chart too. I want you to know here within clarity and the number one, which is the number of leadership and taking charge, that that's exactly what you're doing, group number three. You're taking charge of your time and you're learning to say no to requests that don't serve you. You're putting yourself first finally because you're realizing that every time you made a decision to please other people, those are the times where there may have been regret, where you thought to yourself, I shouldn't have invested my time or my funds or my resources that way. But every time you put yourself first, there is this sense of gratification, of filling your own cup, and then therefore having more to offer to the world. Because if you're constantly filling everybody else's cup, group number three, and yours is constantly empty, there will be resentment sooner rather than later, no matter how selfless and service-oriented, service-minded you are. Next up, we've got the sweet corn. So the bison and the sweet corn actually both correspond to the meaning of a ritual. So I see here that rituals are so important important in grounding you too because we've got the symbol of earth here within ritual and we've got the symbol of earth here within the carrot as well so know here within the sweet corn the bison and the carrot we've got this earth sign energy that's grounding you that's allowing you to be in a meditative state but i also see that six months from now routines and rituals will be an integral part of your existence. Think, for example, having a morning routine. And group number three, I cross off my little bullet journal, journal every single morning. What I have to cross off is meditating, is working out, is reading and also just doing something to care for my skin, the largest organ of the body. And I want you to know here that you too, you will have your own morning ritual, maybe a midday ritual, an evening ritual. Either way, group number three, I can see here within your reading and your cards that this is going to give you the stability that you need to focus full force on your work and drive this baby to success, okay? So group number three, know here that your rituals are sacred and you're not going to stop them for anyone. And you're going to start to religiously do these rituals until they become good habits. And it's just a daily practice. You don't even realize you're doing it anymore, but it's benefiting you so much. And the upturn in your life is going to exponentially take off the more ingrained that these rituals become and also the more momentum you're able to build with them. I see here within the Nasturtium that within six months from now you will find great victory. You will find that something that would help you ground yourself that you're thinking about right now like for example having a car loan paid off having a home of your own having a situation in which you know you can just lean back relax and enjoy because you were able to secure something that's important to you that makes you feel stable i see victory surrounding that and i see that this victory is coming from you initiating action we have got the symbol here of aries which is a fire sign this 
this is a sign of the zodiac that's a go-getter. You may have Aries as well as Virgo placements. I want you to know that these are on fire within the next six months of your life. And I see here within the Nasturtium that because you've got some of your fire sign placements in your birth chart really taking off and really lighting themselves up, you're able to take action before you overthink and before you allow for fears to make themselves a lot bigger than they actually are. Next up, we've got the Snapdragon. I love the name of this Snapdragon. It's just so fun. I see here that within the next six months, there is a lot of purification going on. So maybe you will go through a detox. Think to yourself, a social me media detox, but also quite literally detoxing by eating more healthily, maybe only eating plant-based foods or doing a juice cleanse, a water fast, some sort of detoxification. Think of meditation or yoga retreat and just spending time away from things that you know are accumulating toxins within your body. Of course, we are constantly exposed to toxins. We are constantly, in a way, accumulating toxins through our environment, through our foods, just through doing life as human beings. And our bodies are definitely designed to process these things, to deal with them, and to ensure that we still remain healthy. But there's never anything wrong with supporting your body, with giving your body that extra little bit of support, and maybe going the extra mile to to do a little bit more detoxification than you would do on a daily basis, especially if you're often exposed to a lot of toxins. If you work in an environment where there are a lot of man-made chemicals that you're dealing with, that could be in the medical field. It could be if you're working in the beauty industry and some sort of service where you're exposed to different chemicals. That is when purification is even more integral and important to your mental and physical health group number three. Next up, we've got the scarab beetle spirit. Hmm. And the scarab beetle spirit, you are being given the message that magic works through you. Stop looking for magic on the external plane, group number three. I see here that your guides and your angels are with us within this reading in order to remind you of the fact that there is so much within you that can be brought out. If you're looking for something magical, if you're looking for success, for drive, ambition, for accomplishment, look within because all you need to do is bring what's within you to the external plane in order to materialize it. Don't try to compare yourself to anyone else's journey or success because I definitely want you to know here that your journey is one that is grounded in your day-to-day -day little habits like we spoke about in the sweet corn and the bison in your rituals and the things that strengthen you every single day that is how you grow that is how you strengthen yourself that is how you become more confident group number three and that is where magic works through you the more confident you are the more grounded you are the more you can accomplish because you're not overthinking, you're not procrastinating, and there are a lot of things within your professional life and your academic life that you're now just doing rather than thinking of doing because you put yourself on autopilot. Once you've done your ritual, you know it is go time. Now, group number three, next up, we've got the butterfly spirit. Hmm, the next six months are a huge transformative experience for you. Just as the butterfly goes from the caterpillar into to its pupa stage to then becoming a beautiful butterfly. I can see here that within the next six months, there is so much going on on a transformational basis, both on the inside and on the external plane for you, group number three. It is undeniable that you will be a completely different version of yourself within the next six months. And of course, that goes without say, all of us will change within six months. But group number three, for you, it's to a whole nother degree. It's to a whole nother level. I see here within the butterfly spirit that your transformation is going to be beautiful. It's going to make you see that within a discipline, there is a lot of freedom because all of a sudden you have so much more time because the things that are important to you and that foster growth and confidence and you taking action where action matters in different areas of your life, like your career, like your personal life, like your academic life, all of that happens so easily when you have discipline the moment you wake up, the moment you go to bed, because you have your rituals in place, then you don't overthink other things. And it just happens like that because you know that if you're already able to do a ritual that you've created for yourself, which is not mandatory, huh? 
Group number three, the things you will be able to do to those mandatory tasks, you will be able to knock them out of the park day after day. I see here within the peacock spirit that you will let yourself shine through your heart chakra. I see here within the peacock spirit that you're not afraid of your transformation and what it'll do to you, especially if you're transforming externally a lot. If there are a lot of things on an external plane that you are sick of, group number three, like quite frankly speaking, you are sick of yourself. You're sick of thinking that you don't like this, you don't like that. And what you're going to do is you're just going to change it, be it through a healthy diet and lifestyle, be it through changing your wardrobe or the color of your hair, the way you take care of your skin, or be it through some sort of medical procedure that you're finally giving yourself, I see here within the peacock spirit that you're doing this for you. You're no longer thinking to yourself, if only I was like these people who are so confident, who are so beautiful, who love themselves. No, you are becoming them, group number three. And you are not going to let anyone shame you or make you feel like there's anything wrong with the decisions you have made for yourself because group number three there is nothing wrong with putting yourself first and with feeling happy about yourself internally and externally and from a perspective from a standpoint of the divine it is important for you to remember that you have this body and it matters. We are not just beings that live on the inside on an internal plane. Within this society, it is important for us to also feel comfortable in our bodies, in our external being. And of course, you can foster a lot of comfort and love from the inside out. But sometimes you just also want to do things for yourself from the outside out to represent who you've become on the inside. Next up, we've got the canary spirit. Now, Within the Canary Spirit, Group 3, I can see that you're doing your own thing. Within six months from now, you are doing your own thing financially, you're doing your own thing spiritually, and you have most likely also removed yourself from any people who are trying to create your schedule or your mindset in a way that serves them. So if there is any type of community, both religious or spiritually, that you feel is kind of encroaching on you, kind of trying to push their beliefs on you, that's not going to work, group number three, because I see here that within the next six months, months, you are continuing to have your own opinions, your own values. And while others around you may be very religious or spiritual in a sense that kind of constricts the way that they live, you are a free spirit. You're interested in lots of different worldviews, and you're not going to just take on one belief system, which is going to make you, in a sense, a little small-minded and make your world a lot smaller. You have an expansive worldview and you're keeping that as one of your core attributes for the next six months. So group number three, if you made it to this point of the reading, leave a carrot emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you're here and that you chose group number three. What I'm going to do now is clear and energetically cleanse the space for you and come back so we can delve into more details about what's coming for you within the next six months. So hold tight group number three and I'll be right back with you. Hello, group number three. Welcome back. Did you miss me? So let's move a little further into your six-month prediction, shall we, within this pick a card tarot reading that is specifically designed to guide you for the next six months. Let's see what spirit has to say about your upcoming six-month period. We've got reading. So reading will be important for you, group number three. You know why? Because you're gaining wisdom and knowledge. And that's one thing that nobody can ever take away from you. No matter how many times life knocks you down, no matter how deeply indebted you are financially, I do want you to know here that the more you read, the more that you learn, the more you will be able to get yourself out of any difficult situation, both emotionally and in the material plane. Furthermore, no matter how many times you fall or get knocked down, knowledge is something no one can ever take away from you. It's not a physical asset that can break or that someone can take or steal. One thing that I want you to know here is that the more that you learn, the more you will understand that you don't know very much. And the more 
humble you become. I can see here within writing a gratitude list that your angels are right here. They know that the humility, the humble side and nature that you have within you, group number three, is definitely going to push you to continuously be grateful and also write gratitude lists. I see here that within the next six months, what this will do is amplify your manifestation powers because the more grateful you are for what already exists within your life, the more you will be able to attract new abundance in because it's almost like like a little signal to the universe, to your guides or God, whatever it is that you believe in, that you're already grateful for what's here, so you're ready for more. If you aren't grateful for what's already in your life or you're not expressing it, it just kind of seems like you're taking it for granted or like you're not really aware of the fact of how good you do have it in a lot of amazing areas of your existence. Now, the Eight of Cups here shows me that you're walking away from any type of behavior or pattern that it feels as though it lacks gratitude and care. I see that you're becoming softer within the next six months, group number three. This is a softer version of yourself that isn't so quick to judge, that isn't so quick to have a radical opinion. You're becoming a lot more open-minded when it comes to other people as well. So when someone is rude to you, antagonizes you, or says something that is really out of line, rather than getting mad or kind of saying the same back to them, getting back at them, getting revenge, that's not the vibe anymore. Rather than doing that, you walk away from the situation thinking to yourself that you hope that first person finds peace because honestly speaking, that is just a reflection of what's going on within them if they're treating you as lesser than or if they're treating you in a way that isn't as respectful as it really should be. So I definitely see a huge change in perspective and attitude. Next up, we've got the Knight of Diamonds for you. Now the Knight of Diamonds here shows me that when it comes to the earthly plane, when it comes to how you're spending money, there's definitely a lot going on. Okay, you're definitely going to be investing in a lot of different areas of life. And I see here in the Knight of Diamonds that it's important that you don't lose overview group number three. The world card shows me that within the next six months, you will find that a lot of things that you have hoped and dreamed for have actually come to fruition. And I want to just point out to you, group number three, to not let your future self down, to remind yourself that six months, it's not that much time, right? If each month on average is 30 days, we multiply that by six, we've got 180 days. That is 180 times that you're waking up, that you're doing your routine, you're reading, you're writing a gratitude list. 180 days can truly change your life. It can change your outlook and it can do a real number on how you feel about your existence. And I can see that you are very ambitious and focused to be the better version of yourself. You know you can be. And the Six of Crystals shows me a lot of victory. It shows me here that the more you lean on these things that give you confidence and that are tried and proven, the more you will be able to see that things are coming into your life that you've always dreamt of and wanted. Group number three, one of the things that I wrote into my gratitude list, but also into my manifestation journal is that, you know, I'm so thankful for working with brands and traveling internationally, being flown out to do things in regards to tarot and readings, and it happened. YouTube selected me for a tarot-specific project, and I went on that trip to LA, and that is something I manifested. That is something I wrote down that I was victorious in that came true because I continue to have faith to write my gratitude lists and also to continue to manifest and remove any type of mindset from my brain, from my mind that wasn't rooted in gratitude for what I already had. So therefore, I could attract more. I see here within the five of cups that when it comes to some emotional situations, maybe even romantically speaking, I want you to know that Every disappointment teaches you a lesson, especially romantically. When something doesn't work out, I do see that there is a sense of gratitude for that too, group number three. And this is something that gives you a lot of strength and power because people can see that you are willing to walk away and that willingness to walk away from a relationship that isn't honoring you and isn't working out makes you more attractive. Because when people who are treating you in a way that isn't the way you deserve to be treated see that at any given time you would leave, you will walk out the door because that's how much you love yourself, that's how much you honor and care about yourself, 
that signals to them, hey, this isn't a low value person. This isn't someone I can manipulate or push around or someone whom I can just treat however I want to. I need to actually respect this person for them to stay. Hence, they will be putting in more effort. And I see here in the Five of Cups that it can be very hurtful when you have this willingness to walk away and people still don't treat you the way that you really know you need to be treated. But at the same time, it's like a time to feel grateful for the fact that you dodged a bullet. Because imagine spending decades of your life with someone who is toxic, who's narcissistic, or who isn't valuing you. So if it's already not the vibe in a relationship at the start, don't try and force it into something that it's not. Remind yourself that if you think long term, this isn't what you want to have to deal with for a lifetime. Trust me, group number three. Next up, we've got spending time with animals. So within the six month mark, you are going to be spending a lot of time with some animal friends. You may even adopt some animals or foster them, take care of them. I also see here within spending time with animals in the five of cups that finding an abandoned wild animal is something that's most likely going to happen within the next six months for you and I do see that you're going to read up on it a lot you're going to take care of it and nurture it and try to foster it back to health and I see that you will be triumphant in it in the six of crystals and the world card and this is something that will give you a huge sense of accomplishment and satisfaction and it'll just be fun overall to have learned something new and helped out an innocent beautiful animal being next up we've got you planning a vacation so within the next six months you maybe haven't gone on a trip yet, but you've definitely planned that vacation, okay? You've definitely booked the flights, you're looking at hotels. I see here within planning a vacation that you intuitively know when you need a break and within six months from now, you're prioritizing that. You're prioritizing the fact that it's okay for you to plan vacations and go on trips. You don't always have to be available or ready at work. You need some time to relax too. And I see here within the world, as well as planning a vacation, that this just solidifies an amazing six months of hard work, determination, and discipline. The fact that you're able to afford to go on a vacation, group number three, that says a lot about where you're going within the next six months. I see here within the torch that there's spiritual development, enlightenment, awareness, and understanding that we need to talk about within the next six months of your life. So I see that you're going to most likely take a vacation or a trip to a place that you feel is going to aid in your spiritual development. So think, for example, a trip to a yoga retreat or a place where you might take plant medicine. Think ayahuasca for example but there are so many others that's just one of the most famous ones and a place where you feel as though you can connect maybe a monastery for example going to the east and kind of experiencing different cultures different religions and ways of spirituality and this being practiced in a very non-violent very kind peaceful manner that is one thing that i can see here in the torch that you're inspired to go see i see that just tasting other flavors, seeing other things around the globe is one thing that's also going to make you increase your awareness and your understanding of the fact that we feel like our lives are so important and of course we are the center of our lives but there's so much more beyond what you and i experience on a daily basis that's going on in the world i see here within the wheel for you that it's important that you be decisive about this if not the vacation is not going to take place indecisiveness is going to mean that your life will just ramble aimlessly and in the end nothing's really going to take place and happen so your guides want to communicate to you group number three that now it's actually important for you to make a decision and stick to it and commit to it. Don't think about it too much. Don't overthink it. You know what needs to happen. I see here within the pin that within the next six months, we've got a new job and career coming your way. That's what the pin clearly states. Now, group number three, a completely new job and career means some sadness leaving your old situation while some people, some colleagues, not everybody, of course, and I do see here within the pin 
pin that your new job and career is actually just a symbol of your success and your growth. I see that in the six of crystals and lots of reading. The tent shows me that the next six months has a lot of temporary situations, maybe even a temporary living situation because of this new job and career opportunity, because you need to kind of find a new place to settle. You need to find a new place to live. Maybe you're also maturing and moving out and just overall changing locations. And the tent shows here that a temporary living situation is something that you will go through that will make you feel a little bit uneasy from time to time. I see that with the five of cups, but it's important that you remind yourself here that your comfort doesn't have to be rooted in a place or in material things or in a very specific living circumstance. Your comfort can come from within. It can come from meditation. It can come from your spiritual development and the enlightenment that you're experiencing. But of course, it will take time and changes in the environment. It's definitely something that affects us internally too and we're definitely not going to discredit that on this channel whatsoever we're just finding ways to work through it yes baby steps hello universe hello angels they are speaking they're here i see here within baby steps that taking little steps forward following your intuition even before it makes sense before you know exactly what direction to move into just already going with what your gut feeling says those are the baby steps that you're taking forward those are the things that will help you within the next six months and following your intuition before you have confirmation can look a little something like this reaching out to different job agencies, reaching out to different people in order to change your job because you already intuitively know that you've kind of outgrown where you are. Or for example, intuitively speaking to someone about what the future may hold romantically between you and this other person because you already know in your gut feeling that they may have a completely different idea of the future than you do, but taking baby steps, listening to your intuition, bringing up things that other people are not bringing up for your benefit. So you don't waste your time or your energy on situations that aren't meant to be in the long run. I see here within the whale and orca elders that you're not here for any shallow conversations and small talk is just really not your forte. It's not your thing. You don't thrive with people who just want to be surface level. I see that you want to go below the surface. You want to go deep. The whale and orca elders show here that sharing your experiences, your song, your frequency of sound, that is important to you. That is something that is much needed. And I see here within loosening your grip too, that there's this kind of density that you need to talk about. And you don't like being around people who don't allow for you to just talk about real things. You don't like to be around people where as soon as you talk about what's actually going on in the world, the shocking, scary, and sometimes absolutely horrific parts of humanity when people just close off or their eyes just glaze over and you can just tell they're not here for it they're uncomfortable you cannot be around those types of individuals because I definitely see here that any type of density needs to be loosened up okay there is this kind of sense of needing to be free, needing to be able to just loosen your mouth, so to say, to just talk freely, to be open, because there are already so many situations in which you have to conform to a certain degree, right? Whether it be work or academically, whether it be with certain friends and family members and colleagues, that is already a version of yourself that is a little refined. So when you do have some spare time or when you are making new connections, you wanna make sure that any friends or romantic interests are actually people with whom you can have those deep conversations, with whom you can actually talk about things that are uncomfortable. Next up, we've got the inner earth. Now, the inner earth shows me here that even when you feel alone, even when you feel as though you haven't found your tribe, you haven't found the people that really vibe with you and understand the depth that you need, you'll survive this, you'll get through this, I want you to know here that the inner earth is representative of you finding new solutions and beginnings within the next six months. On one hand, as we spoke about in the pin, we've got this new career going on for you. But on the other plane, I also want you to know that if anything doesn't go as planned or the way that you want, for example, romantically speaking, you'll 
you'll survive this, you'll survive a heartbreak, you'll survive a situation in which you maybe have to start from zero or trust needs to be rebuilt with a partner. Because I do see here within baby steps and inner earth that if you're in a committed relationship that right now is in a very rocky place, group number three, you will have to take little steps forward to rebuild, but you can get through this with your partner and your person. And group number three, furthermore, I want you to know here that a message that's coming through about you within the next six months is a lot of self-development and growth that allows you to be happy independent of what your love life is doing and independent of how other people feel, even those closest to you. You don't need their approval in order to be able to make your own choices. So group three, if you're still with me, leave a little flame emoji below in the comment section, just as we have here within the torch, while I clear and cleanse the space another time so we can lay more cards and figure out more information about what's coming towards you within the next six months. So I'll be right back with you while you leave that little flame emoji below. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to thumbs this video up. Group number three, I'm back after brewing myself a fresh cup of nettle tea, ready to get further into your six month prediction. So group number three, let's see what else is going on for you within six months, 180 days. This is gonna fly by and I can't wait for you to think back on your reading and say to yourself, wow, so many of these things that transpired were in my favor and so much has happened in 180 days that I'm proud of. We've got the raven, the jaguar, as well as the cat. Now in the raven, one thing that I can see here is that there's some important news that's coming to you. And the jaguar shows me here that what it's gonna do, it's gonna free you from overthinking. It's gonna completely free you from allowing something to live rent-free within your head that doesn't deserve to really live rent-free in your head. And I see here in the cat that you intuitively already knew the news and the truth. So maybe you've been asking yourself whether someone is cheating, lying, whether someone is maybe pregnant or going to move to another country, whether someone is going through a breakup. There are different scenarios here that are possible. We'll go into a little more detail about what it most likely is, but I want you to know that within the next six months, you will receive the news, you will receive the truth, and it's going to make you feel as though, okay, now you can finally stop overthinking this situation, even though you intuitively already knew what it would be, you intuitively already knew the answer. So group three, if there's ever a situation in which the answer hasn't clearly been given, but intuitively you kind of think you know what it may be. And then when people actually do confirm, it's also a confirmation of the fact that your intuition and gut feeling was right. And I do see that this confirmation and affirmation of your intuition further allows you to also solidify your psychic abilities and the fact that maybe you do have a sixth sense that is a little stronger than the ordinary. Next up, we've got the barking dog. So within the barking dog, I can see that this is advice that you're receiving from a friend. So there's some sort of person with whom you're very friendly with, who's going to give you this news, who's going to tell you what's going on here. And I see here within the cracked cup that this has to do with someone who's dissatisfied with where their life is headed. So think someone around you going through a divorce or a breakup, you intuitively knew it was going to happen. You already felt like this person who is important to you is going through some big life changes and maybe they were too proud or afraid to say anything to you. They didn't want to make you feel as though they were a burden or like you had to worry about anything but they've been very dissatisfied with life and I can definitely see here that finally having them move on with their life finally having them just be open and honest and be real with you about what they're going through is definitely something that will just let everything be more at ease in your personal life because now it's no more like there's a huge elephant in the room. I see here within the apple that you're definitely going to be very tempted to tell this person that you already knew this was going to happen. So if you have a close friend or family member and you can already tell that their relationship is not going to work out, you can already tell that they're dissatisfied with a romantic situation that is 
furthermore extending the dissatisfaction further into their entire life but you can't really tell them you're tempted to tell them that you know this isn't going to work out but you know that they just have to go through it themselves and you also don't want to risk becoming the enemy you don't want to risk becoming the naysayer to them the person who doesn't believe in their happiness or doesn't want them to be happy because that's always a risk that you run with close friends and family you see that a lover or a person isn't treating them the way that they should be treated when you see that a relationship isn't going to last it puts you between a rock and a hard place because do you say something and risk alienating the person or do you remain quiet and then you have to potentially see them suffer but often it is best for you to just allow for yourself to take a step back because hurting or alienating a friend is definitely something you want to avoid at all costs within the next six months i see here within the beaver that another thing within the next six months that's happening here is some environmental changes at your work so changing where you're working the location we did talk about a career change so geographically you're maybe just going to change addresses because you're completely changing offices but i do also see here within the beaver that your entire work schedule and landscape is going to be different so if you're working in an office you'll be working from home and vice versa if you're working home you'll be going more on site and into an office you'll be meeting more people i see here within the tarantula that human connection and just overall being around more people is what's coming within the next six months and this is maybe something that you've missed and by missed i mean you know it's healthy for you but that doesn't mean that you necessarily wanted it especially if you're an introvert maybe there has been a sense of missing human connection but you didn't really realize that anything was quote unquote missing because you're more of an introvert so Knowing that more human connection is coming can cause a little bit of anxiety, group number three, but I want you to know here that at the end of the day, even if you're an introvert, it will make you feel good to get out there, to connect more frequently, to have more interactions with other people, because just strictly on a fundamental level as human beings we do need a little bit of social contact a lot of us don't need much of it but a little bit of it is good for us every now and then i see that you'll be able to shine and i do see here that a lot of people within the next six months that you're meeting are going to feel like you've gone through this huge glow up which you have i mean we talked about it at the start of this video this reading of yours and i do see here within the swan that they may not be able to quite pinpoint what has changed about you, which is actually good because it shows that you're not doing anything too radical or drastic, but they can just tell that you have this effortless kind of elegance, this effortless beauty to you that has increased that has come within the last couple months from you working on yourself and you finally giving yourself the things you've always wanted within the bat i can see a little bit of night owl activity too i can see that what really helps you is to be creative during the night or evening hours and i see here within the swan that that's when you create your most inspiring touching and beautiful work so if you are an artist let yourself have some spare time in the evenings for your art form and try to not go out as much you may be laughing an introvert right now group number three if you don't go out much anyways you may think to yourself vanessa i have time every night anyways because i'm not going anywhere so just know here that within the next six months creating during the night time during sunset that is the best time for you and i see here within the zebra that another thing to be aware of within the next six months is that things are changing when it comes to what you see as beautiful and what not so the beauty standard that you used to praise is going to change on an internal plane of course this always takes time but i can just see here that you're kind of quote unquote worshiping and praising other types of bodies other types of appearances than you're used to and just overall the beauty standard your ideal of what beauty is is something Something that is transforming and I don't just mean how people look I also mean for your art your craft and the things that you create and design you are changing your aesthetic that's one thing that I see here within the zebra and as another message I just also see that you're finding balance between what you once thought 
you should do and where you are now and finding a great way to find like a middle ground that's still authentic but allows you to grow in your art form. Next up, we've got the Two of Swords reverse. Now, group number three in the Two of Swords reverse, I can see that we're banishing any indecisiveness for good within the next six months. You're not afraid to make choices and decisions independently. You're not afraid to say what you want and also demand more, especially in the workplace. If you feel underpaid and undervalued group number three you're going to speak up about it and to you there is no middle ground there's no feeling a little bit undervalued or underpaid either you feel undervalued or you don't and your boss the people who you're working with better change something about that as i see here within the seven of wands that you're no longer going to risk laying your hand into the fire for people who are not here when you need them i see that you're the type of person who is very protective, you're fiercely loyal, but you can take that away at any moment if there is no reciprocity. And I see here that there is no working late nights, late shifts, late hours, going the extra mile when you feel as though it's not appreciated. So I definitely want you to know here in the Seven of Wands reverse that within the next six months, just kind of putting your foot down and saying what it is that you need and you crave is most likely also going to make a lot of people respect you more because they can tell that you're not a pushover. I see here within the hanged woman that it's important to remain patient when you put in a request, especially at work, okay? If you feel undervalued and underpaid and you make it known, don't freak out about whether you're going to lose your job or what they're going to think or if they're going to complain. Just remain silent for a little bit. Just show your true inner strength and the fact that you know what you bring to the table and you know that you are the type of person who can find other opportunities and other jobs, that you're not dependent on anyone because you create your life, you create your opportunities. I see here within the Three of Wands that what that will do is it will actually let you move up the job and opportunity ladder. I see here within the Three of Wands that it will let you move further in the direction that you want to. It's going to be like baby steps, but I want you to know that it's just all part of where you want to end up. It's all part of the game. And I see that you've got a lot of foresight here. You're looking into the future. You're planning ahead. The three of wands shows me here that everything that you do within the next six months, it's just strategically building your confidence and also building your track record, your reputation in a way that serves you in the long run. So group three, what I will do now is I will cleanse, clear the space and come back. So we can talk a little bit more about your personal life, your love life, your emotional health, all of the in-betweens about what's happening within the next six months. So I'll be right back with you in just a moment. Welcome back, group number three. Let's move further into your prediction. I'm using the Pastel Journey Tarot deck, which by the way, you guys, is restocking shortly. I can't wait for this to come back because I know so many of you absolutely love this deck of mine. So let's move into your reading. Let's see what Spirit has to say about what's happening within the next six months. First up, we've got the Magician. This is the first card of the tarot. Well, the second, but it corresponds to the number one is what I meant to say. The first card of the tarot of the Major Arcana corresponds to the number zero, which is the Fool. But we're talking about the magician here, which is a card that speaks of action, of concentration, and power. So within the next six months, you're definitely very focused. You're in your leadership role and energy, and you're very much unafraid to let everybody know that you're not taking no for an answer. For you, no just means not yet. And I see here within the magician that you've got a lot of divine masculine energy of getting things done. And that is another thing that people will just have to deal with whether these are lovers, whether these are friends and family members, you are putting your foot down where feet need to be put down, group number three, and you are going for the things you've always desired and wanted. I see that we've got some balance here. So on one hand, we've got the magician, which has a lot of divine masculine energy, but then we've also got the empress, which is like the epitome of femininity. It 
is the epitome of fertility, of nurturing energy, of motherhood, of your senses coming to life. And I want you to know within the empress and the magician that you've got this great balance going between when to get things done, when to take action, when to lean into your divine masculine, and when to lean into your divine feminine and just allow for yourself to be taken care of, but also to nurture others, to daydream, to romanticize your life, to make yourself the main character of your existence, group number three. So the fact that you've got this balance going on within the next six months shows a very healthy mental standpoint. So if there are any type of mental ailments that you're dealing with or that you suspect you've got, I want you to know that you will be able to thrive. You will be able to overcome a lot of adversity when it comes to that area of your life. And the Empress does also show me fertility. So if this is something you're interested in or that sounds good to you, the next six months are great months when it comes to motherhood and fertility. If this is something that you're not interested in right now, group number three, take necessary precautions. And of course, not all of us are fertile in the sense of motherhood being an option. And I want you to know here within the Empress that when it comes to fertility and motherhood, this shows nurturing energy. So also taking care of younger ones, of children, of people who are less experienced around you. I see here within the Four of Cups that settling for less is not an option. Within the next six months, you're making it clear what you want and what you desire. And I do also see here that when it comes to fertility, you may have to try a few times okay there may be some disappointments along the way when it comes to family planning but ultimately these next six months are meant to be triumphant but the magician shows me that you have to take the lead and you have to be unafraid to try again when things don't go your way the four of cups and the empress does also show me here that there can be a little bit of resentment when you take care of everybody, when you're the glue that holds a family or a community together, but you feel like when you're going through something, all of a sudden everyone has disappeared and is nowhere to be found. So it is essential here that you remind yourself to fill your cup first, quite literally speaking, group number three, because it is nobody else's job to make sure that you're in a good place or that your cup is filled than yours. That is your job. That is your responsibility. And you will find, of course, that even if there's resentment, even if you are in the right to feel resentful or down or sad, that's not going to change the fact that your cup is empty if you let it run out. Next up, we've got the star. So within the next six months, I can see a lot of hope on the horizon and I can see a lot of changes for the better, as well as you embarking on a path that's leading you closer to some really big goals and dreams that you had. So dreams and goals that you had for the next five or 10 years, I see that there's a lot of hope on the horizon within the next six months that you will accomplish those and that you're on track for those. Group number three, I also want to remind you that often we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in 10 years. And that is where I can see here within the star that you're actually recognizing how much can be done in, say, a month, in a year, or in 10 years, and you're fully leaning into your productivity, and the star does also show me that you're trying to find different ways how you can stay healthy mentally and physically, and how you can also, like, plan a family and a home life that makes you really happy because I see here in the star the empress and the magician you are in the next six months going to be in a situation where for the first time it's your choice what you do because you're kind of able to figure out any situation you're able to figure out being in a marriage or a child in your life you're able to figure out your professional life it will all work itself out in one way or another you have this gut feeling that of course it won't be perfect and nobody is ever ready for these huge life changes but you could figure it out and also a lot of people in other life circumstances which may have been even more challenging than yours have figured it out in the past so Group number three, you're not wavering from the thought that you can accomplish anything that you set your mind towards. Yes, group three, you're manifesting magic. That is the perfect way to put it. I see that within six months from now, you're manifesting things that you didn't think were possible, but I also see that you're doing some really fun rituals. Think 
full moon rituals, new moon rituals. You're really in tune with the divine. You're in tune with the unseen, with the universe or God, whatever you want to call it. You know my channel is all inclusive. And I see here within Manifesting Magic that you're also in your birth chart's highest power. So regardless of what your zodiac sign may say and what its challenging traits may be, you're leaning into the positive traits. You're leaning into the traits that show that you can accomplish big things. And I see that by doing so, by focusing on the positives, by focusing on taking action and finding ways rather than finding ways why things won't work, you're able to do a lot that other people will never be able to access unless they shift their mindset the way you have group number three. Next up, we've got some emotional baggage that's come up for you, group three. Let's talk about it, okay? So within the next six months, there are some things that you're going to have to deal with, some things from the past, some things from your upbringing, your childhood, some traumas. And this emotional baggage, group number three, it's not just going to go away. It's not just going to get lost in transit. You're going to have to deal with it. And I see here within the Four of Cups that you're not a fan. You're not about it. You don't want to spend time, energy, and money on therapy. It's a lot easier to just vent to friends, right, or coworkers. But I want you to know here, group number three, that it may be beneficial to invest in a professional, a licensed professional who knows what they're doing, who is a confidential person to speak to, and to remove the stigma of receiving help for emotional baggage. We've all got some. None of us have had a perfect upbringing or childhood, no matter what worked in our favor or how privileged we may have been we have all gone through things okay and it is important for you to know that these things can still affect you in the present moment and dealing with these things now within the next six months is the right time it will never feel like the right time but it has to be dealt with group number three i see here with an upside down that changing your perspective about emotional baggage and trauma and mental health is really going to help you find more inner peace with yourself and feel more at ease with the things that you've gone through and also seeing things from a perspective of a licensed therapist of someone who knows what they're doing how to handle and deal with emotions healthily will also let you see yourself in a different light because you can find out how others view you and how they view you, whether they view you as healthy, whether they view you as someone who maybe needs a little bit more support than they realize. All of this can be important information. And group three, a piece of advice that I want to give you is to not settle for any type of medical professional or any type of therapist that you don't feel comfortable around. No matter how many people say that they are the best, trust me, group number three, I have been to doctors, to health practitioners that people said were so amazing, but they were actually very arrogant. They didn't listen. They just stuck to their own opinion. They never let you really fully finish and talk. They just already made up their mind and they didn't make you feel as though they cared about you. They felt more like they had to represent their reputation, or at least that's how it felt like to me. And it's important that you vibe with the person who you're opening up to and being so vulnerable with. Of course, those healthcare practitioners, I'm sure there is a reason why they have that name or they have that reputation and I'm sure that they work great for some people but remind yourself you are not everybody okay and you are not some people you are you if something is off if something doesn't feel right even if it's with for example a teacher a class that you're taking and it is seriously stifling your performance or how open you're able to be how comfortable you're able to feel in order to work on yourself your future your mental health you need to change that situation, okay? You need to see it from the perspective of this is valid. Just because other people don't feel this way or other people would be okay in this situation or are okay with this person doesn't make it invalid that you're not okay with the situation or with that person, group number three, okay? Don't you ever let anyone make you feel as though your intuition and your gut feeling doesn't matter or isn't valid just because, oh, the majority thinks this. 
Trust me, the people who really make waves and really change the world and really know themselves are not the one who just swim with the majority. They're the one who swim against the current. Next up, we've got create and progress. I see here that within the next six months, group number three, you're going to make some huge progress when it comes to creative endeavors. Maybe you have some hobbies that you're doing right now that you're into. Group three, I, for example, have been writing some poetry and I've been able to create and progress so much to the point where I'm like, hey, this little hobby, I could publish this. I could put this out there and I can see here within creating and progressing that you've got some art Maybe it's art that you've painted. Maybe it's music or poetry, like writing as well. Maybe it's also healing that you're doing with other people and you're able to progress at that craft and become really good at it to the point where you're thinking to yourself, huh, maybe I can actually make this a main squeeze, a full-time job, a full-time occupation because progress is just going so wildly well within the next six months. I see some big happy changes that are coming towards you within the next six months. So for you, group number three, the changes are going to be huge. Of course, we're all going to go through changes in the span of six months. That is to be expected. But for you, the changes are especially big. And we have had this reoccur within your reading on several occasions, group number three, that your changes are going to be meaningful. They're going to be big. They're going to be undeniable. And they're going to be on a very cellular transformative level to the point where a lot of people who meet you six months from now or who maybe haven't seen you for like a year and then they see you again, they're not going to recognize you, group number three. They're going to think you're a completely different human being inside and out. I see here within Be Still that within the next six months, you will also learn to sleep a lot better. Being still will be something that is less scary if you suffer from insomnia or nightmares. Know here that you're going to be able to find some ways to soothe that and help that in a natural way. Okay, so not by, for example, taking sleeping pills because those can be very harmful in the long run and those do not give you the restful sleep that you really need. And I do see here within the sweet treat that there's also going to be a lot of learning in the kitchen when it comes to sweet ingredients. Okay, so eating more fruit, being a little frugivore, if you will, also learning more ways in which you can bake and create sweet treats that are healthy for yourself, especially if you've got a sweet tooth, and understanding that on one hand, of course, having sweet things before bed and so on, it does keep some people awake, but for some of us, having some ice cream before bed is just what we need in order to soothe our nerves and drift away into some beautiful, sweet dreams. So figuring out what works for you and not shaming yourself for your culinary preferences and the things that make you feel good that you like to eat and consume is what I see within the next six months. But especially here within being still, I see that because you're creating a lot and you're doing a lot when it comes to the arts, that puts your mind at ease and that allows for you to get to sleep more quickly and without feeling like you're turning and tossing for like hours. Next up, we've got make a meal. So make a meal in connectivity to the sweet treat. You're definitely improving those cooking skills, okay? You're definitely going to be spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Now, spending a lot of time in the kitchen can also be like therapy. It can be very soothing and also it can make you just overall a lot healthier because you're cooking with fresh ingredients, right? You're using things that have not been put through a lot of preservation, okay, that are preservative free, and you're able to really kind of see what digests well in your body. You can figure out what tastes good for you, what you like to cook, what takes too much time, what fits well into your routine. And I do also see that you're potentially meal planning as well as you've got the time and the energy to put into planning ahead. That's one thing about the next six months. And the more you plan ahead, actually, the more time you create for yourself. So it's like the more work you do up front, the better it works out for you. I see here within your beauty ritual group number three that you are definitely going to be engaging and taking more care of your physical appearance. And there are some rituals that you're going to 
stick to that you're no longer going to skimp out on so if in the past the first thing that had to go when you had a lot going on in your personal life or at work was your beauty routine your nail appointment your massage therapy for example getting your hair done you're not sacrificing those things anymore because you understand that you need that alone time sometimes especially if you're in a relationship or you're a parent and you're just a very busy individual overall group number three you need that alone time and sometimes it can be like therapy okay to talk to a beauty technician to a beauty person about what's going on in your life i mean they know everybody's secrets if you are someone who works in the beauty industry and i mean for example doing nails doing hair just one-on-one -on -one with clients you can probably verify that let me know below in the comment section um, that everybody kind of like feels comfortable around you. You just have this innate skill to allow for people to open up and talk and you probably have so much knowledge about so many different people that it's scary. But do know here within being still and your beauty ritual that putting those things first is the best thing you can do for yourself within the next six months and also not cheaping out on those things. I see here within the sun that happiness and well-being is what we've got within the next six months, group number three, which I'm so happy to announce for you that we've got the sun we've got a lot of positive and radiant type of energy here for you within the next six months we've got the older woman i see a great relationship with a mother or grandmother type of figure with someone who's older than you who has this divine feminine matriarch type of energy they're wise they've been through a lot they've been through ups and downs in marriages divorces children they've experienced it all they have a whole arsenal of life experience and wisdom to share with you and i see that you're really paying close attention to them you love to just spend time with them and listen that's one thing that i see connected to being still and the magician because you just understand okay this person has so much to give that i can learn from and you cherish the information and i see here connecting this to the star the older woman being still and the star that it gives you a lot of hope for the future because this person has been through a lot they will talk to you about their lows and their highs and you will understand that Anything that you're feeling or going through, it has been felt before on this planet. There is someone who has gone through this too and who came out the other end stronger, who came out the other end able to pick themselves up and be better, do better, still create an amazing life. And that is what I can see here that the older woman is inspiring you to do. Next up, we've got the fire. I see very strong emotions and the fire stands for passionate love or hate. And I can see a little bit of a love hate relationship here with food that is being healed. This is especially true if you've had an ED or you're currently suffering from an ED, whether that is binge eating, whether that is any of the other EDs. I want you to know know here within the fire making a meal in the sweet treat that you're learning to see things from a, a different aspect perspective gradually know that here in connectivity to upside down and emotional baggage i do definitely see a little bit of a strained relationship and strained emotions around some foods some sadness around some foods that maybe remind you of tough times like if a specific type of scent or aroma or cake reminds you of a time where you saw a loved one for the last time a grandparent something they always used to make or you for example just feel a very strained feeling when you see a certain food because you know that it was a trigger at one point and maybe still clearly is a trigger and there's emotional baggage attached to it that is where all these strong emotions play a role and i do see that the more you shift your perspective about the fact that you don't need to let this take a hold of you and that you're also giving yourself time to gradually heal from it and gradually acquaint yourself with certain foods and certain situations around food the more you will find peace because it is a gradual process it is something that takes time it won't be perfect but the more you kind of confront certain things and just try to give yourself time around food, give yourself the things that your body craves and really wants in a manner that is balanced, the more you will find that slowly but surely you can return to a little bit more 
normalcy, a little bit less emotion when it comes to this topic. Next up, we've got the wall. So within the wall, I want you to know here that you will realize that there have been misunderstandings between yourself and your body. Within the next six months, you will understand so much more about your body and its workings and that it's just been trying to keep you alive your entire life, group number three, and you will give thanks to it. For the first time, you will not be at war, but you will be at peace. You will let those walls crumble down and you will understand it was just a misunderstanding between your head that was infiltrated by different beauty standards that society pushes on you and the fact that you ever felt like your body was in need of criticism or change just because of those beauty standards. I see that this is a huge misunderstanding that you had on an internal level that you're going to deal with, you're going to start to come to terms with, and you're going to start to realize that you can have your own beauty ideal if you've always felt healthiest and best when you, for example, are at a higher weight or at a weight that is lower. Try to just do what feels good, what digests well, where you feel comfortable in your clothes and you know that the comfort is not coming from a superficial place, but the comfort is coming from a, a place of having energy too, of mentally being sharp, right? And that is one thing that I can see here within the wall, that those misunderstandings are finally being addressed. It's going to be emotional. It's not going to be easy, group number three, but it's worth the effort and the time to work through these emotional baggage situations that you've got going on in order to free yourself from their constraints in the future and to live a life that is a little bit more guilt-free, that is free of any unnecessary suffering when it comes to the topic of your body image and food. So group number three, this is the reading that I received for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this super in-depth one-on-one with a lot of details about a lot of things that are going on within the next six months. And if you feel better now at the end of the video than you did at the start, then my mission was accomplished because I'm here to provide you with support and of course, healing, loving type of energy. Make sure that you leave a little sun emoji below in the comment section if you made it all the way to the end. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, Channel, but we've been with each other for the past hour group number three hit that subscribe button you belong to the unicorn family and i can't wait to speak to you during one of my upcoming predictions mm -hmm.